can support us, completed Novel House in link below clip. Thank you for come in and love the sharing story, chapter 1001, Soundless World, the boy was sound asleep in bed. He had no idea about the door's appearance. Compared to last time, the door seems to have gotten closer to the boy, Men Nan whispered. Take a close look at it. There is something inside the door that wishes to come out. Could it be the ghost fetus? This scenario reminded Chin Gu of the door of the school of the afterlife but the similarity was limited. For example, the door that appeared by the boy's bed felt unreal, like it would shatter once touched. There were faded blood vessels moving on the door, but it did not give off an unpleasant feeling. This was what confused Chinga the most. He had encountered many doors before, including the door from the school of the afterlife. Once they appeared, the surrounding atmosphere would turn eerie and dark, with the scent of blood permeating the air, but this door was an exception. It did not feel threatening. If anything, its presence felt like a warning to the boy. There are too few blood vessels on the door, aren't there? Chenga got closer to the door. He only took few steps when the doorknob started to jiggle. It was not that loud, at least not loud enough to wake the boy. When Chenga retreated, the door returned to normal. It stops me from approaching it, huh? Chen Gu put down the backpack and signed something at Men Nan. He moved toward the door alone, and this time, the door did not react. It's due to the presence of a red specter? Standing before the door, Chen Gu did something brave. He reached out toward the door. The door was like a lingering spirit. Chen Ji's finger phased through it directly. I can't even touch it. This is the first time I've met a door like this. He was not sure whether a door would appear next to all the candidates selected by the ghost fetus after they fell asleep. In any case, he did not hear Fang Yu mention anything about this, so this might be unique to Jiang Ming. If that was the case, Chen Gu should pay more attention because it meant there was a high chance ghost fetus was hiding inside Jiang Ming. His fingers wandered on the surface of the door, but he could not touch it. Just as he was about to give up, a chill came from his fingertips. Chin Ji's fingers at that time were hanging by the doorknob. Most of the blood vessels are gathered around the doorknob, so this doorknob is the only thing that's real or closest to the real thing? Tong Tong's trick could only be used once, so Chin Gu did not want to waste this opportunity. However, he did not dare to push the door open alone. Even though it did not have many blood vessels on it, he was not confident that he could survive behind the door alone. Should I take this risk? The black phone said that I will die if I can't locate the ghost fetus within nine nights. In other words, this period is when the ghost fetus is the least prepared or weakest. The chance was before his eyes, and Chen Gu was unwilling to give it up. He slowly retreated. Men Nan, hand me the bag. You guard outside the door. You're going in there like that? Isn't that a bit too rash? Are you not going to think about it further? The doorknob will vibrate once it senses a red specter, and the rattling will wake up the boy. Once the boy wakes up, the door will disappear, so I only have one chance. Chingo looked at the boy in bed. He's deaf, but he can hear the rattling of the door. The thing that the boy lost is probably behind this door. Taking out the recorder, Chen Gu hugged it in his chest and then took out the broken ballpoint pen and placed it inside his pocket. After his previous lesson, he had learned not to put everything inside his backpack. After he was ready, Chen Gu took a deep breath. He stared at the doorknob as he charged toward it. The blood door sensed the presence of a threat and it started to rattle with agitation. The lashes of the boy in bed flickered. Just as he was about to open his eyes, Chinga broke through the door. Inside the dark bedroom, the boy sat up in bed. He looked around and repeated the word daddy stutteringly into the darkness. A horrible stench rushed into his nostrils. Chinga carried his backpack and looked around. This was a very old rental apartment. There were seven to eight families living on one floor, and they shared one bathroom and kitchen. The corridor was littered with trash, and dirty water stained the ground. Rotten vegetables floated in the brackish water. 
What is this place? Chen Go looked behind him. He was standing before a rusted metal door. There was a large lock on it, and he could not leave that way. Is this the door that I pushed open? Chen Go took out the ballpoint pen. After realizing that he could still communicate with his employees, and he instantly calmed down. The scenario behind the door is made from the door pusher's memories, so this should be where the boy has his deepest memory. Dirty, dilapidated, and old, the place stank. The place that Jiang Ming could not forget was a complete contrast to his current home. Probably because they were staying at a place like this, Jiang Ming's parents agreed for their boy to be adopted. But there is money that goes around, and the boy's father even wrote a letter to threaten for more money. That's disgusting behavior. Jiang Ming's biological parents no longer treated Jiang Ming as their son, but as a tool to earn money. They had no idea what their child was going through. The scenario behind the door is this apartment. What Jiang Ming can never forget should be here somewhere. Chen Ge carried his bag and moved forward. Not too long later, he saw a wooden sign hanging on the door of the family that took the corner room. The sign read, If you have an emergency, pull on the rope of the lamp next to this repeatedly. Is this where the boy stayed? If he's deaf, he wouldn't hear the knocking anyway. Chen Go pulled on the rope. The lights in the room lit up. He pulled it repeatedly, but no one showed up to open the door. The boy is deaf, but his parents shouldn't be. Chen Go looked at the lit room and knocked on the door. His finger touched the door lightly. Chen Go did not use much strength, but it echoed so loudly that it even startled Chen Go a bit. Why would that happen? Chen Go quickly stopped. He started to notice the uniqueness about this place. It was so quiet, there was no sound. Is this what Jiang Ming's world feels like? Those who were born deaf should not have the concept of hearing, but those who lost it later would remember sound. Their mind was not silent, there was just an impenetrable layer that could not be broken between their memory and the real world. It would be a thin layer. In fact, it was probably as thin as the gap between the real world and the ghost world. Still, it was a layer that was strong enough to stop the sound waves from traveling through. After the echoes from the knocking stopped, the scenario changed slightly. The stench grew more intense, and it was laced with the smell of alcohol. Without warning, a man's face suddenly appeared at the stairwell of the second floor. He was like a blob of boneless mud. His arm was joined to the alcohol bottle as if the bottle grew from his flesh. He slid his bulbous body toward Chen Go. Chapter 1002, Absurd World Made from Memories He is a literal representation of as drunk as a pile of mud. Dot. Chen Go stared at the slowly approaching monster. He pressed on the recorder and called Su Yin's name. To his surprise, Su Yin did not show up but the whole apartment started to bleed and small cracks appeared on the wall. After communicating with Su Yin, Chen Ge found that he was stopped by some unknown force. He was trying to break through it, but he needed some time. When I entered the door behind the underground morgue, I ran into the same situation, but this place is no match at all for Dr. Gao's underground morgue. Placing the recorder back in his bag, Chen Ge took out the hammer and stood in the corridor. There is no need to run and hide. The scary-looking hammer grated on the peeling wall. When the monster got close enough, he aimed right at the monster's arm. The bottle that grew out of the arm shattered, the glass shards flew everywhere, and some embedded into the monster's body. Can we communicate? The monster could not feel pain. Even though his arm was broken, he moved faster. After he got close to Chen Ge, he reached out his other arm to grab Chen Ji's head, trying to slam into Chen Ge. Looks like the thing is not sentient. Holding the hammer with both hands, Chen Go swung it vertically on the monster's chin. The already malformed head was almost blown off the rest of its body. It was attached to the neck by a thin layer of flesh. The smell of alcohol thickened. After the monster was injured, it became uglier and more aggressive. While Chen Gu was contemplating how to deal with this monster, he felt a chill coming from behind him. He turned his head slowly. The rental doors on the side had been opened, 
and several twisted-looking monsters appeared silently behind Shin Go. They were very close to him. The original tenants behind the door will not make any sound no matter what happens. They can hear me, but I can't hear them. He thought about it and realized that was exactly what Jiang Ming was experiencing. He was deaf, so no matter what other people said, he could not hear them, but if he made any sound, the people around him would react to him immediately. So, I am taking Jiang Ming's perspective in this world? This was the first time that Chen Gu had encountered such a strange world behind the door. He felt troubled. The enemies could approach him silently, and they were hard to kill, but if he made the smallest sound, the enemies could hear him. I'll deal with this one before me first. After the drunkard was injured, his face had become as red as blood, and thick capillaries had puffed up on his face. He became more violent. The arm attached to the bottle waved around, and Chinga realized that the arm would join itself to whatever it came in contact with. The world behind the door is weaved from Jiang Ming's memory, so this man should be an important character in his memory. A violent drunkard that exploded when resisted and would grab anything nearby to start attacking. Chinga looked at the drunkard and stared into that ugly face. This is such a horrible human being. Raising the hammer, Chinga aimed it heavily at the monster's head. The hammer sank into the monster's shoulder, and he gave him another kick. Chen Gu gave no chance for the monster to react. He hit him repeatedly. If he can still stand up after this, I'll have to consider something else. The drunkard collapsed on the ground. His face became redder like it was about to explode, and his body was still expanding. If this drunkard is the boy's father, then in the young boy's memory, his father was someone unbeatable and unshakable. Chen Gu turned back to look. The neighbors all looked strange with twisted appearances. Their ears and mouths were comically enormous. Depending on the boy's memory of them, each of them had a special trait that separated them apart from the rest. One reeked of cheap perfume, while another had short limbs and a round belly. These neighbors were distinct from each other, but their reaction when they saw Chen Gu fight with the drunkard was surprisingly similar. They stood at their doors, peeling their ears to listen and whispering to each other. They would only turn Chen Ji's way when Chen Gu made some noise. If Chen Gu kept quiet, they appeared too lazy to give him any attention. I wonder if these neighbors can be killed. Being stared at by the group of monsters, Chen Gu felt pressure. The scariest part about the scenario was that he could not hear the sound of these monsters approaching. He could turn around to a wall of faces looking at him. I can't hear their voices. This world is too quiet for me. The drunkard was most likely Jiang Ming's biological father. He was very hard to kill, but the neighbors might be different. Chen Ji's plan was to first kill the drunkard and then massacre the rest of the neighbors before he could explore the rest of the place in peace. The plan was simple and direct. He raised the hammer and entered the room that was closest to him. Inside was a middle-aged man wearing a tank top. His limbs appeared to have atrophied, they were at least half the size of normal limbs. In contrast, his belly was bulging, filled with fat. There was a thin, wiry old woman in the room as well. The old woman wandered around the room as if possessed, cleaning this and that. There were several plastic tubes that were stuck into her body, and the tubes were joined to some medicine bottles that were collected in a dirty corner of the room. A kipper? The memory world of Jiang Ming was different from a real adult world. It was absurd and strange. Chen Gu could not be sure that he had read this situation correctly. The neighbors were monsters born out of his twisted memory, so Chen Gu did not need to hold back. The hammer slammed heavily. The injured middle-aged man crawled into the room. He grabbed the plastic tubes that were originally placed in the medicine bottles and started to suck. The old woman who bustled in the room shrank before Chen Ji's eyes. After a while, the man stood up again. He waved his short limbs as if taunting Chen Gu. These things can't be killed, or at least, the hammer is not strong enough to kill them. The drunkard had almost fully recovered, and he was becoming more aggressive than before. 
Chin Gu hammered the man several more times before he leaped over the drunkard and headed to the second floor. After learning from his previous lesson, this time, he moved quietly and did not make any noise. I'll hide for now. Chen Gu entered the toilet on the second floor. He sneaked into it and contacted Su Yin through the recorder. After communicating, Chen Gu found out that this world behind the door was very unstable. It required the power of five red specters to tear down the boy's memory, and then he would be able to escape. However, Chen Gu would not do that unless necessary because the ruination of the memory might cause irreparable damage to the boy. Chapter 1003 I can hear your voice Chen Gu calmed down after knowing how to escape. The door is slowly approaching the boy. When a red specter appears, it will make some noise to remind the boy. No matter how you look at it, the door has no malicious intent toward the boy. Scratching his chin, Chen Gu thought, something inside the door wishes to come out, but I didn't see such a creature when I am inside here, has they gone into hiding? The thing inside the door didn't want to harm Jiang Ming, so it wouldn't be the monsters radiating evil. Perhaps this is the place Jiang Ming lost his hearing. Chen Gu remembered the mission message on the black phone. The ghost fetus mission is a life and death game of hide and seek. Am I supposed to enter the door to find the thing the ghost fetus has hidden? This could be my first direct challenge toward the ghost fetus. That seemed possible. He took out the black phone and wanted to check the mission details again when footsteps came from the second floor corridor. They were very light footsteps. It sounded like a child walking on their tiptoes. If not for ghost ear, Chin Gu would not have heard it. Someone is passing by? This thought entered Chin Ji's mind, and he widened his eyes. Impossible. The monsters formed from memory will not make any sound, I experimented with that earlier. Since he was deaf, Jiang Ming could not hear the world, but he could hear the sound in his own heart. The world behind the door was made from his memories. The only person who could make any noise there, other than outsiders like Chin Gu, was Jiang Ming himself. After Chin Gu opened the cubicle door, he found that there was no one in the toilet. He carried the hammer and the backpack as he left the toilet. He saw a group of children standing in the corridor. The children wore clothes that were much cleaner than the neighbors. They were holding some toys as if in the middle of some interesting game. Is Jiang Ming among them? Chin Gu slowly approached them with the hammer. Before he arrived, the children noticed Chin Gu. The children looked friendly, and their clothes were pretty and clean, but their appearance was something else. They had exceptionally large eyes, and their mouths grew wide like they were all trying to mimic the Joker. The leading boy pointed at Chin Gu and then pulled on his ears. The surrounding children started to laugh. From Chin Ji's perspective, he could not hear any sound, and he could not hear the children's laughter, but he could see their ugly expressions. These kids are making fun of me. His eyes narrowed, Chin Gu observed closely. Through the children's moving lips, he got the gist of what they were saying. They were mocking Chin Gu for his stupidity because he was different from them. They said that his deafness was infectious and that those who played with him would become deaf. Looks like Jiang Ming is not among them. A deaf person would not laugh along to these jokes. Chin Gu raised the hammer, but he did not attack the children. It's meaningless to injure these kids. After I leave this world, I will go back to the real life to teach a lesson and have them come to apologize to Jiang Ming. The neighbors were impossible to communicate with, and Chen Gu believed that it was because Jiang Ming was just a child and did not have that much interaction with adults. However, it would be different with people his age. Jiang Ming clearly remembered the mocking and jabs these kids made at him. They seemed to have played together often, so Chen Gu believed that he could find clues on Jiang Ming from these kids. He squatted down and tried to gesture with his hands, attempting to communicate with the kids without making any noise. Chen Gu did not wish to make things so complicated, but if he made any noise, the drunkard would chase after him. Chen Gu did not want to deal with him, so he had to do this. Even after gesturing for a long time, the kids did not give Chen Gu any information. It was as if all they could do was humiliate and mock, 
gaining their reason for existing from that. Just as Chen Gu prepared to give up, one of the children suggested a game, and Chen Gu volunteered to join. The leading boy was kind enough to gesture at Chen Gu, saying that they wanted to play hide and seek. They would use rock paper scissors to decide who the seeker would be. All the children played paper, and only Chen Gu played rock. The children had obviously discussed this beforehand. They wanted to make fun of Chen Gu. They split up and started to hide, leaving Chen Gu alone in the corridor. These rascals, after I catch you, I will. Chen Gu could not stop himself from grumbling, but he quickly caught himself. He looked around, and thankfully, no monster appeared. I've gotten used to talking. It's so hard to get used to when I need to suddenly keep quiet. Carrying his backpack, Chen Gu was about to move forward when he heard some movement. It sounded like someone had accidentally knocked into a chair. The sound came from the direction where Chen Gu had heard the footsteps earlier. Jiang Ming? Chen Gu slowly walked down the corridor. He realized that one of the rooms was not locked. Pushing the door lightly open, there was a lot of Shui horsetail embroidery that was unique to Jiao Jiang in the room. Horsetail embroidery was a culture heritage going obsolete, so Chen Gu did not expect to run into so much of it there. Many colorful fabrics, knitting needles of varying lengths, and colorful threads were left on the table. The whole apartment building had a dim color palette, but this room was sunny and bright. The bamboo chair is not by the table. Someone probably knocked into it earlier. Chen Gu closed the door and looked around. The room was not big, there should be a senior living there, because there was a pair of reading glasses among the knitting stuff and a walking stick leaning against the bed. The table was placed in the middle of the room, and there were two bamboo chairs around it, so there should be two people working there. The bedside table had an old man's black and white picture. Underneath, the frame was a eulogy. The tenant should be an old lady. This is her living space and her working space. Chen Gu took a stroll around the room, but he did not see the tenant. This room is bright and colorful, completely different from the other rooms. This place should be special to Jiang Ming. He feels warmth here. The tenant of this place must have been nice to Jiang Ming, but the problem was Chen Gu could not find this mysterious tenant. Chen Gu did not want to give up like that. When he conducted a second search, he heard some noise coming from the bedroom closet. Silently getting close to it, Chen Gu yanked the door open. A faded scent of mildew drifted into his nose. Chen Gu saw a boy about four or five hiding inside the closet. The boy was curled up in the corner. He was different from the others behind the door. The proportions of his face and body were normal. Jiang Ming? Chen Gu asked softly. Hearing Chen Ji's voice, the boy's face took on an impossible expression. In this soundless world, someone had called his name. After a temporarily pause, Jiang Ming recovered, and he nodded heavily. The boy was not born deaf. In his memory, there is the impression of sound, so what happened to him? Chen Gu knelt down beside the closet and started to study the young boy before him. Chapter 1004 boy looking for snail clothes and shoes that were one size bigger than he needed, a dirted face, and clear eyes that were filled with shock. The child hid behind the old lady's clothes, showing only half of his face. You can hear my voice? Chen Gu put down the backpack and reached out lightly toward the boy. Do not be afraid. I will not hurt you. The boy who hid at the back of the closet behind the clothes looked at Chen Gu cautiously. He stared at Chen Ji's hand like it was a foreign object and hesitated for a long time before giving him his hand. The chilling small hand slipped into Chen Ji's palm. The warmth that he had not felt for a long time caused the boy's eyes to slowly widen. Have you been here for a long time? Chen Gu pointed at his feet. He wanted to ask whether the small boy had been staying behind the door, but the boy seemed to misunderstand him. He waved his hands and started to gesture wildly. After Chen Gu studied him for a long time, he finally understood that the boy was in the middle of playing hide and seek with the rest of the children. 
He was hiding there, because, well, he was hiding from those who were going to capture him. Seeing the boy who tried his best to communicate with Chen Ge, the latter shook his head lightly. The other children did not play to find him at all, they were probably pranking him all along. He had been so serious, hiding inside the closet, but in the end, the one who would open the closet doors to find him would most likely not be the other children, but the original tenant of this place calling him to come out for food. Have you considered making more friends? Have you ever wondered what life's like beyond the window? Have you ever had the urge to see outside the world? Chen Gu had found the key person behind the door, Jiang Ming, but there was one question that boggled his mind. What was the relationship between this Jiang Ming and the other Jiang Ming in real life? This Jiang Ming inside the door might represent the hearing that the Jiang Ming outside the door had lost, but the chance of that was not high. Combining all the clues and signs, the door would only show up when Jiang Ming outside the door was soundly asleep, so this Jiang Ming inside the door probably represented the actual consciousness of Jiang Ming. In this world constructed from his memories, every movement and character somehow correlates to the real life. Jiang Ming wishes to play with his friends, and he hides in the room that gives him the most warmth. This should be the most beautiful and treasured memory that he has. Chen Gu wanted to say something else, but Jiang Ming's eyes suddenly changed. They turned from shock to terror in an instant, and tears were practically flowing out of his eyes. He's looking behind me. The smell of alcohol crawled into his nostrils. Without saying a second word, Chen Gu lunged forward, grabbed the boy, and rolled to the side. The alcohol bottle slammed into the closet wall. The glass bottle shattered everywhere but it did not make a sound. The thick blood vessels bulging on his face, the drunkard monster had entered the room. He had probably heard Chin Gu talking. This thing sure is stubborn, and the most troublesome thing is that it is impossible to kill. Chin Gu held the Dr. Skullcracker's hammer with one hand and carried the boy in his other arm. The boy was shocked. He was like a kitten who was tortured, and his body was shaking nonstop from fear. The fear toward his drunk father is deeply embedded in his heart. It is this fear that keeps on providing power to the drunkard monster, making him stronger and stronger. A plan started to form in Chen Ji's mind. If I can help the boy overcome his fear and use actual actions to tell him that his drunk father is not unbeatable, things might look up for the boy. That was easier said than done. To change a memory that deeply inserted in one's mind was too hard. Jiang Ming, please do not be afraid. As long as I am here, I will not allow anyone to hurt you. Chen Gu placed the boy on the chair, and he gripped the hammer with both of his hands tightly. With the rate at which he is gaining strength, I can kill him with my hammer at least ten more times. With all the preparation done, Chen Gu was about to make his move when the door of the room was opened from the outside. An old lady with a head of peppery hair walked into the room while holding a bowl of noodles. The old lady had a hunchback, and she looked at least seventy years old. The expression on her face was one of genuine kindness, but when she saw the drunkard monster, her expression shifted immediately. She put down the bowl of noodles, grabbed the cane that was leaning against the bedside, and slammed it repeatedly on the monster. The scary and horrifying drunkard monster started to panic when he saw the old lady. For some reason, he looked like he was afraid of this fragile-looking senior. The drunkard monster did not feel pain when Chin Gu smashed his head in with the hammer, but after being slapped several times by the old lady's cane, he could not stand it anymore and quickly slithered out of the room. The old lady briefly chased after him, brandishing the cane, before she returned to her room. She closed the door of her apartment angrily. Then she walked into the bedroom, came to the boy's side, and caressed the side of Jiang Ming's face lovingly. The old lady had Jiang Ming come to the table to have dinner. She served him the noodles that she had just made. They were piping hot, and they looked mouthwateringly delicious. Jiang Ming ran over to have his dinner. The old lady then turned her focus to Chen Gu. The surprise in her eyes was no less than that of Jiang Ming. Granny, can you hear me? The old lady nodded. You still have your senses with you? 
we can communicate? It will work even without an actual conversation. Chin Gu took out the ballpoint pen that was taped together from his pocket and then removed the comic from his backpack. He had all the stationery ready. Studying Chin Gu, the old woman said something, but Chen Gu could not hear her voice at all. She pushed away the ballpoint pen that Chen Gu offered her and turned to walk toward the living room. Staring at her back, Chen Gu suddenly realized. This old lady was different from the other characters behind the door. Her body was faded like she could disappear at any moment. Most importantly, Chen Gu sensed a chill from her body. Using his Yang vision, Chen Gu realized that this old lady did not appear to be the product of Jiang Ming's memory. She was an actual lingering spirit that was about to disperse at any moment. Without an object of possession, a lingering spirit could only exist for a limited time in the world. The rule was the same even if one was behind the door. Even though the old lady's memory had overlapped with Jiang Ming's, granting her more time in this world, that was all. It would not allow her to survive forever. One day, she would still disappear. When that happened, the old lady behind the door would be formed from Jiang Ming's memory completely. Perhaps she would still protect Jiang Ming behind the door and make delicious noodles for him, but she would not be the same kind old lady anymore. It would only be a mirage that Jiang Ming had made to console himself. Chen Gu was getting more and more intrigued by the truth. He walked to the old lady's side. She was taking out a pen and some paper from the drawer, and she started to write on it. With every character that she wrote, her body would become less real. When the old lady finished writing, she handed the paper over to Chen Gu. It had a short sentence written on it. Be careful of the snail. The snail? Chen Gu had entered the door many times, and he could be considered to have gained a great understanding of the world behind the door. The scariest thing in this place was a red specter, and something scarier than one of those would be a demon god, but the old lady warned him of a snail? The snail is even scarier than that drunkard that you can't kill no matter what. Chen Gu asked in a whisper, and the old lady nodded. I get it now, but how are we supposed to get out of this place? Hearing Chen Ji's voice, the old lady placed her finger on her lips, signaling for Chen Gu to lower his voice, and then pointed at the character snail on the paper. Is the way to leave also on the snail? Is this snail the nickname of some specter? Or does it represent something else completely? Chen Gu was still thinking when Jiang Ming finished the bowl of noodles. He carried the empty bowl and stood up from the table. It seemed like he was going into the kitchen to wash the dishes. He was stopped by the old lady. The old lady ruffled Jiang Ming's hair kindly and then used her apron to wipe Jiang Ming's lips clean. Then she stood before Jiang Ming and pointed at Chen Gu. Jiang Ming understood her immediately. He grabbed Chen Gu by his hand and very happily pulled him out of the room. Where are we going? Chen Gu knew that the old lady did not mean him harm. From what she did earlier, she had probably told Jiang Ming to take Chen Gu to do something important. When Jiang Ming heard Chen Ji's voice, a very innocent smile appeared on his face. He quietly slid his hand into his pocket like he was eager to share his secret with another person. Moments later, Jiang Ming took out the shell of a snail from inside his pocket. He cupped the shell of the snail carefully in his palms like it was the most important treasure to him in this world. Chapter 1005 Waking Up from the Nightmare A Snail? The old lady just warned me to be careful of the snail, so why would Jiang Ming have the shell of a snail inside his pocket? Chen Gu was confused by this development, but he was certain that the old lady would not harm Jiang Ming. Putting the shell carefully back into his pocket, Jiang Ming led Chen Gu out of the old lady's room by pulling his hand. The child led Chen Gu all over the rental apartment. They visited the rooftop, the storage room where the tenants kept their barrels of gas, and a toilet cubicle that was filled with trash. Whenever he came across a snail, Jiang Ming would be overjoyed. Chen Gu had no idea why Jiang Ming was so adamant about searching for snails, but he saw how serious Jiang Ming was, and he did not have the heart to stop him. He accompanied Jiang Ming silently. They ran all over the apartment, but in total, 
they only found four snails. Jiang Ming placed all of them inside his own pocket, then he grabbed Qin Ji's hand and ran to the ground floor. As long as they did not make any sound, those strange neighbors would not come out. After being given a beating by the old lady, even Jiang Ming's father had disappeared from their view. Are you going home now? Jiang Ming nodded happily. He led Chen Gu to the rental room with the wooden sign hanging by the door and reached out to pull on the string that was attached to the lamp. The lights inside the room flickered a few times, and then the door of the room was opened. A slender woman with pale skin appeared behind the door. Seeing Jiang Ming arrive home safely, she had a warm and kind smile on her face. But when she saw Chen Gu, a flash of panic crossed her eyes. She was probably afraid that a stranger had suddenly appeared on her doorstep. The woman used sign language to communicate with Chen Gu. From that, Chen Gu believed she was a deaf and mute person, too. Chen Gu was not familiar with sign language, so all he could do was to smile and ensure that he did not look threatening to the woman. The house door slowly opened. Jiang Ming excited ran into the woman's embrace. He took out the snails one by one from his pocket like he was showing them off to the woman. The woman touched the boy's head with a kind smile on her face. She watched quietly as Jiang Ming ran through his findings happily. This should be Jiang Ming's mother. After entering the room, Chen Gu closed the door. Seeing the homely situation before him, Chen Gu felt himself being cordoned off from it. The woman's face was not different from a normal person's, but her body was covered with patches. Viewed from a distance, Jiang Ming's mother was like a rag doll. Of her entire body, only her hands that she needed to work and her face did not have cloth patches on them. The other parts of her body had been patched up by threads and scraps of fabric, and her skin was like a coat that had been patched up many times. Chen Gu could not even begin to fathom what the woman had been through to appear in this manner in Jiang Ming's memory. The woman continued to sign, and she appeared to be complimenting Jiang Ming, but the happy atmosphere soon disappeared. The light by the door lit up again. The doll mother and young Jiang Ming turned to the door. Finally, it was Jiang Ming's mother who walked to the door and pulled the door open. The stinging smell of alcohol drifted into the room, and the ugly grimace of the drunkard monster appeared at the door. The mud-like body slammed against the door. The arm that had the bottle attached to it pointed at Chen Gu, while the monster glared viciously at the rag doll woman. The woman signed, but the drunkard had lost his patience a long time ago and pushed her angrily away. Seeing the drunkard return home, Jiang Ming took out the snails from his pocket and jogged toward the drunkard. He held the snails in both hands and tried to show them to the drunkard, but before he could even extend his arms, the drunkard monster smacked Jiang Ming on his shoulder and knocked his own son off balance. The snails fell to the ground, and the drunkard monster stomped on them angrily until they disintegrated into dust. These were the snails that Jiang Ming had tried his best to find all over the apartment. The drunkard monster stared at the shattered shell on the ground, and his face turned redder. The blood capillaries bulged on his face, and he became ever angrier. The anger needed to find a vent to unleash. He flipped over the small table in the living room. The glass cup was about to cut Jiang Ming, but thankfully, the rag doll woman ran to shield Jiang Ming from being injured. The scalding water splashed to the ground, and part of it splashed onto the drunkard monster. His face was burning red. He grabbed the rag doll woman by her hair and pressed her to the ground. After the woman was slammed into the ground, her first reaction was to wave her hand at Jiang Ming for him go and hide inside another room. The drunkard monster dragged the woman by her doll legs, and the arm that had the alcohol bottle growing out of it slammed down on her repeatedly. The boy stood frozen in the corner of the living room that now looked like a scene from a battlefield. He had no idea where he had done wrong. The snails lay shattered on the ground, and his rag doll mother had her life beaten out of her. His shoulders were shaking from fear. He had no idea whom he could request help from. He looked at his own mother who was in pain, he wanted to help her, but he was powerless. He did not even know how to speak. Don't be afraid. 
Chin Go patted Jiang Ming's shoulders that were shivering. I will help you. Chen Go leaped into the air and kicked at the drunkard monster. After separating the monster from the ragdoll woman, he weighed the hammer and slammed it right onto the drunkard monster's shoulder. Bang! The drunkard monster slammed into the door. Chin Go did not give the monster the chance to counter and continued to press on with his aggression. Jiang Ming, look at this. He is not invincible. He is just a weak coward. There is no reason for you to be afraid of him. The drunkard monster's body was rapidly recovering. His arm grew to envelope the furniture inside the room, and the expression on his face was getting grimmer and grimmer. I will lure him into the next room. After he follows me, you have to run out of here as soon as possible. To give Jiang Ming and the rag doll woman more time to escape, Chin Gu could only attack the drunkard monster again and again. Every time he was knocked down, the drunkard monster would turn uglier and uglier. His body kept on expanding. His back was stuck to the wall, and his body slowly joined with the rest of the room. In Jiang Ming's memory, the keywords home and father were closely joined together, so Chin Gu was not surprised that something like this would happen. The only thing that worried him was that Jiang Ming and the ragdoll woman had not escaped from the room. Cracks appeared on the wall, and the ceiling started to peel down in great pieces. The ground was shaking. The light behind the door flickered several times before it suddenly went off. After the light blinked out, a horrible stench came from the ceiling of the room that was now submerged in darkness. The cracks on the ceiling were getting bigger and bigger. The drunkard monster's body was getting so large that his body was already touching the ceiling. At this moment, the roof of the room started to collapse. The horrible stench pulled at his nostril like it was palpable. The thing that was crushing the room under its weight had decided to show itself. Carrying a swirling exoskeletal shell, with a sticky body, a giant blood-red snail was crawling on the top of this home. An endless stream of negative emotions channeled into the drunkard monster's body. One of the smaller antennae of the giant snail peeled back a small opening to show a mouthful of countless teeth. A giant body reached out from inside the shell, and the blood-red giant bit at Chen Gu. A snail? Why would such a scary thing appear in Jiang Ming's dream? Chen Gu retreated while he fended off the attack from the giant snail. After the latter showed itself, the world behind the door started to change. The walls of the apartment started to bleed and the whole building shook like it might crumble at any moment. Go upstairs and find that old lady. Chen Gu led Jiang Ming and the ragdoll woman up the stairs. The neighbors who were no different from the monster started to become agitated with madness under the influence of the blood-red snail. Initially, the feeling that this world gave Chen Gu was one of absurdity, like a picture that was randomly drawn by a very small child. But once the red snail appeared, the world became gorier and more chaotic, or in other words, it became more and more like an actual world behind the door. The trio went to the room where the old lady resided. Chen Gun knocked on the door heavily and repeatedly. Granny, I will take you and Jiang Ming away from this place. I already know how to escape. The door opened soon after. The old lady stood at the door with the support of her cane. She saw the crazed neighbors and the blood-red snail that was crawling this way. Your spirit is still lingering around, and that means there is something tying you to this world. You should not stay here, come away with us. Chen Gu had already made his decision as he took out the comic. The old lady hesitated. She opened her lips to say something, but Chen Gu could not hear her voice at all. I will take that as a yes. Chen Gu turned around to guard the old lady, Jiang Ming, and his mother behind him. He stared at the blood-red snail that was slowly crawling toward them. This snail is the real culprit that has literally crushed Jiang Ming's family under its weight. It is also the representation of all the negative emotions and misfortunes in Jiang Ming's mind. If I can destroy this thing, Jiang Ming might not be confused or scared by it anymore. Pressing the play button on the recorder, Chen Gu called softly, Suin. Blood-red trails started to expand with Chen Gu as the center. 
The blood-red snail sensed the presence of a threat. All the crazed neighbors started to run to gather around it. Five red specters are enough to destroy this incomplete scenario, so the additional red specters can be used to help maintain the basic structure of this scenario. Flipping through the comic, more and more blood trails appeared on the walls, ground, and ceiling around Chen Gu. They carried incredibly high hostility, and they spread to cover the entire scenario in record time. The blood-red snail had stopped moving. It sensed a threat that it had not faced ever before, but Chen Ji's hand that was still flipping through the comic did not stop. More and more blood vessels appeared. They seemed to pull a curtain over the world behind Jiang Ming's door. Finally, at a tipping point, the threshold was broken through, and the heavy scent of blood rushed forward like a wave of the blood ocean. One red figure after another appeared beside Chen Gu. Their clothes were as red as blood. Without Chen Gu saying anything, the red specters were like sharks that sensed blood in the water. They jumped at the blood red snail. Being cornered by several red specters, the snail's hardy shell was broken, and then Chen Gu was given a view of something ghastly. At the deepest part of the snail flesh, there was a baby face whose eyes were closed. The face was similar to the face that he had seen inside the shadow's body in Liwan City. It was how the ghost fetus looked when he was an infant. The ghost fetus? The baby's eyes slowly opened, and pure evil was dancing in his eyes. A shrill laugh echoed throughout the world. The flesh of the giant red snail imploded. The baby's face dissolved into a puddle of dirty blood, and what remained of the giant snail was a wooden toy. Looks like the ghost fetus is not hiding inside Jiang Ming. Even though he had not found the ghost fetus, at least he had managed to decrease one possibility. Chen Gu walked to the carcass of the blood red snail and picked up the toy off the ground. He had impression of this toy. It was a gift that had been given to him by his father when he was young, but one day, it had suddenly disappeared. Was it stolen by the shadow? After the snail exploded, the world behind Jiang Ming's door started to vibrate violently. The strange-looking neighbors started to disappear one after another, and the basis of this world was shaken to its core. Chen Ge had the other red specters temporarily stabilize this unraveling world while he walked to the old lady and Jiang Ming. It is time to say goodbye to this pain. I will take you away from here. Flipping open the comic, Chen Gu wanted to pull the old lady and Jiang Ming into it, but Jiang Ming held on to the hands of the ragdoll woman and refused to let go. The woman that only existed in Jiang Ming's memory pushed Jiang Ming lightly but firmly away. She waved goodbye to Jiang Ming with a smile as her body became lighter and lighter until she completely disappeared. After we leave this place, I will take you to meet her in person. She must miss you greatly. Closing the comic, Chen Gu led Jiang Ming by the hand and walked down to the ground floor accompanied by a few red specters. The world was crumbling, and they opened the locked steel door. When Chen Gu walked out of the door, Jiang Ming, who was lying in bed in real life, opened his eyes. He sat up in bed and saw Chen Gu, who was walking out from what appeared to be thin air. The door behind him collapsed, completely. Chen Gu held the backpack with one hand and looked at Jiang Ming quietly. Jiang Ming, who sat in bed, did not make a sound. He did not cry or scream. He seemed to recognize Chen Gu. Just treat what happened earlier as a bad dream. After the words slipped from his lips, Chen Gu realized that Jiang Ming would not be able to hear him. He took out a pen and paper and wrote down the word mother. Sleep well tonight, and I will take you to find her tomorrow. Just in case Jiang Ming was not old enough to recognize Chinese characters, Chen Gu made gesture while he wrote. After some time, it finally sank in for Jiang Ming, and for the first time, he had a genuine smile on his face. Have a good sleep, good night. Touching the boy's head, Chen Gu flipped through the comic and released the old lady. Granny, can you hear me now? The old lady's eyes had been following Jiang Ming. Her body was almost transparent. There is a question that has been bugging me. Why would there be such a scary snail in the world behind Jiang Ming's door? Has he been traumatized by a snail before, 
or was he pranked with a snail by other kids when he was young? Chinga had many speculations, but none of them sounded applicable in this situation. The snail was just a symbol of something else. It is not a real snail. There was a pain in the old lady's voice. Jiang Ming's mother was born deaf and mute, and she was hated by her own family from a young age. After she reached the legal age, she was married off to Jiang Ming's father for the dowry. Her family never did care about her in the first place. Then Jiang Ming was born. Even though he was not born with muteness and deafness, he had problems with his hearing. The doctor suggested for him to get a cochlear implant, but even the cheapest option costs several dozen thousand RMB, and the more expensive one goes up into the millions. The doctor said that the earlier the operation, the better, but Jiang Ming's mother did not have that much money lying around. One should not even have hopes toward his father. Once Jiang Ming's father found out that Jiang Ming was hearing impaired, his attitude toward the mother and son had a huge transformation. He even thought about abandoning Jiang Ming, but thankfully, Jiang Ming's mother stepped in every time. You saw what happened later. Jiang Ming's mother came to me to learn the art of horsetail embroidery. She wanted to collect money to do the cochlear operation for her son. However, the boy's father liked to drink and gamble. He would come back home and steal his wife's hard-earned money, and eventually, he openly asked the money from her. If she refused, he would beat her up until she surrendered. Jiang Ming grew up in this kind of environment. Perhaps he was too young to understand what a cochlear implant was, but he knew from his mother and the doctor that the implant looked like a snail, and he probably made the connection in his mind that the snails would represent a hope to gain hearing in his world. He tried his best to collect all the snails that he could find because he was desperate to hear from the others, but at the same time, it was also an undeniable fact that his family collapsed under the weight of that snail. After hearing the old lady's story, Chinga finally understood the world in the boy's eyes. There was the cruel truth hidden behind the absurdity. Granny, do you know where the boy's parents currently live? What do you plan to do? I planned to teach the boy's father how to be a man, and I wish to help the boy's mother. Chinga took out the wallet from his pocket. If the situation allows it, I also wish to help Jiang Ming gain the ability to hear. You wish to sponsor this boy's surgery? What's wrong with that? I might not dress the part, but I am actually an entrepreneur. Chinga then opened the backpack and slid the hammer inside it. Chapter 1006 Someone's been to my house, there is no need to prove yourself. A cochlear implant surgery will cost quite a lot for anyone. The old lady smiled genially. She did not seem to believe Chen Gu. From his appearance, Chen Gu definitely did not look like an entrepreneur. An old backpack, normal clothes, and clothes that came from the night market at that. The most valuable thing that he had on him was probably the Dr. Skullcracker's hammer that had the blood red groove. Don't worry. Chen Gu flipped through the comic. Granny, why don't you come with me for now? If you wish to see Jiang Ming in the future, I will bring you to come see him. Even though the boy still has the hearing impairment, he seems to be able to hear the voices from the other world. I cannot guarantee that he will retain that ability after the surgery, so before that, I'd prefer if you come to accompany him more often. Okay, thank you, young man. The old lady entered the comic. At the same time, the black phone in Chin Ji's pocket vibrated. Chinga took out the phone, and there were two unread messages. You have completed one ninth of the four-star trial mission, Ghost Fetus. The Ghost Fetus hearing is seriously impaired. Red Spectres favored, you do not have much time left. Congratulations Red Spectres favored for collecting the blessings of 100 different spectres and spirits. You gained the special title Votive Master. Vote of Master, real salvation is not victory after a massacre, but being able to offer peace in the heart and the energy of life within the torrents of despair when one has this title, completing a specter's or spirit's wishes will tremendously increase their affection toward you. At that same time, it will shear away part of their resentment. I've gained a new title? Since when did I collect so many blessings? 
Could it be the students from the School of the Afterlife and Muyang High School? Titles were permanent, and their effects were constant. Sometimes, Chen Gu suspected that his constant encounters with the supernatural were due to his initial title of Spectre's favored. Putting the black phone away, Chen Gu waited until Jiang Ming had fallen asleep, then he slipped out from the room. I still need to find the mud statuette with Jiang Ming's name. It is probably on Jiang Jiao. The thing is useful to Zhang Ya, so I must get it somehow. After leaving Jiang Ming's home, Chen Gu removed the gloves and plastic wrap from his feet. He ran down the stairs, avoided all the camera, and retraced his steps back to the streets. After he hopped over the wall, he turned back to look. I was not seen on the cameras, and I didn't leave behind any fingerprints or footprints. Even if Jiang Ming accidentally brings me up, they will not find any proof. Taking out his phone, Chen Gu very openly video called Jiang Ming, who had not returned home. The call was answered. In the video, Jiang Ming was driving, and he looked pissed. Chen Gu? I don't think our relationship is close enough for you to call me so late at night. I am just outside your house. I have something that I need to discuss with you. Why are you at my place at 1 a.m.? Have you lost your mind? Jiang Ming appeared to be in a bad mood. He who is unjust is doomed to destruction. As I told you this morning, by placing the altar at the haunted house, you've attracted too many evil spirits and specters. The first person they will harm is the one who set up the altar, Chen Gu said. You have already been targeted. There is something hiding in your shadow, and it has been following you around. Stop trying to scare me. I am trying to save you. The call was ended. Jiang Ming had hung up with impatience. Seeing the black screen, Chen Gu was not agitated. He stood at the gate, waiting for Jiang Ming. There was one last opening in this setup that he made, and that was Tong Tong, who was still in Jiang Ming's phone. Tong Tong has done a great job. I'll have to reward him. Chen Gu set up a new social account on his phone with a smile on his face. Half an hour later, Jiang Ming drove back to his residential area. Seeing him, Chen Gu carried his backpack and walked to the middle of the road to block his path. Are you seeking for death? Jiang Ming honked several times, deeply annoyed. That night, he had driven from the city to eastern Zhejiang, then to western Zhejiang, but for nothing, and in the end, he was scolded unreasonably by Jiang Jiao. Remember how you are acting now. After some time, you will come and beg me. Chen Gu took out his phone. The altar at your haunted house is deeply haunted. It is not housing any good spirits. I will warn you one last time. Remove it now, or you and your family will be drowned in misfortune. Move away. Jiang Ming had had enough. I can't just stand here and watch you die. I will give you one last chance. Chen Gu opened his newly created account. The ID was votive master. One night, if something strange happens at your house, contact this person immediately. He will come help you. Chen Gu refused to budge until Jiang Ming added this account as a friend so that the latter had no choice but to take out his phone. Now, are you satisfied? Narrowing his gaze, Chen Gu saw Tong Tong crawl back into his own phone and then nodded. Karma is always watching, take care of yourself. Putting away the phone, Chen Gu carried the backpack and jogged away because he was afraid that he might start laughing if he stayed there. Jiang Ming can be removed from the list, and the ghost fetus's power has been greatly reduced. This is a good night. Chen Gu walked on the quiet street for a few minutes. It was as if he was the only person in the whole city. The feeling was relaxing. After tonight, I still have six nights left. That should be enough time. After leaving Jiang Ming's world, Chen Gu was not that worried. He reached into his backpack and took out the wooden toy that he had lost years prior. I still remember this toy, so the shadow probably remembers it as well. An image appeared in his mind of the shadow standing behind him, watching while he was playing with the toy. Has he wanted to kill me since way back then? Chen Gu put the toy away. He had a feeling that he might have a use for it later. 
he had just zipped up his backpack when his phone rang. He saw the caller ID and noticed that it was from Jiang Ming. Chapter 1007, What Goes Up Must Comes Down, How Can I Help You? His goal had been achieved, and Tong Tong had returned, so Chen Gu had nothing to worry about. It's like this. I've considered what you said, and I feel like you might not be wrong. Why did your attitude suddenly change? When I reached home and saw my son, he was reacting very strangely. He gestured for a long time before I understood him. Jiang Ming lowered his voice. Someone has been to my home. See, I told you. Check under your bed, in the closet, and in the bathroom. Perhaps the person hasn't left. Chen Gu sounded serious, but his lips were curled upward. I have already taken a quick look around. There's no one in the house, and nothing is missing. Jiang Ming disliked talking to Chen Gu, but he had no other choice now but to ask for his opinion. It is not a good sign that you have nothing missing, because that can only mean that the person came looking to claim a life. Chen Gu paused for a while, like he was seriously considering this. Life? Jiang Ming seemed to remember something. He sank into silence and did not speak. Sometimes, children can see things that we adults are not able to. That is all I will say on that topic. If you really run into any difficulty that you cannot solve, I suggest you go and contact that boat of master. Be nice and ask him for help. He might be able to point you in the right direction. Chen Ge hung up the call. He hailed a cab and returned to New Century Park. Entering the underground scenario, Chen Gu summoned the group of doctors. Are any of you familiar with a good and reputable ear doctor? One who knows how to do cochlear implant surgery? I have a student that is a specialist in this field, but we have not met each other in a very long time. Dr. Wei had taught many excellent students in his years of service in education. He gave Chen Gu another surprise. But why would you suddenly want to know something like that? Chen Gu told them about Jiang Ming's story, a drunkard father, a mother that was born mute and deaf. The doctors felt sorry for what had happened to Jiang Ming. My student should be working at a hospital somewhere in Xi'an Hai. He is one of the best in the field. You can call his hospital to book an appointment with him. Elder Wei, with our relationship, do we still need to book an appointment? Can't you just go to his dreams and ask him for a favor tonight? Chen Gu knew how to get what he wanted from Dr. Wei, so he quickly added, The boy is in such a poor condition, and he is being targeted by a demon god, so I plan to use my own money to help sponsor his surgery. However, I am sure you know how expensive this cochlear implant surgery is. I do not come from a rich family. I am already in my twenties, but I have no car and no house. I still need to sleep every night at the haunted house. If anyone ever heard about this, I'd be the joke of the century. Chinga rubbed his eyes that were brimming red with tears. These past few months, I have been saving money because I wanted to buy a motorbike for myself, but due to this sudden accident, my already financially strained life will be more difficult in the foreseeable future. Enough, enough, I will help you. Are you satisfied now? Dr. Wei rubbed his temples. It is not that easy to just jump into someone's dreams. You can try to contact him first. Tell him my name. It was me who sponsored him during his first two years at medical school, so he will definitely help, but please do not go and scam the poor boy. I promise. After thanking Dr. Wei, Chin Gu returned to the staff break room. As his head landed on the pillow, he drifted off to dreamland. He had no time to waste. There were many important things waiting for him to complete the next day. Chinga woke up punctually at 7 a.m. the next morning. After taking a cold shower, he put on an outfit that looked presentable. When his employees came to work, Chinga put on makeup for them in the dressing room while conducting a simple morning meeting. After ensuring every scenario was working fine, Chinga grabbed his backpack and left New Century Park again. When he was inside the taxi, Chen Gu used this traveling time to call Li Jing to get the latest update on Jia Ming. Li Jing had gotten used to getting calls from Chen Gu. 
it had now become as consistent as him clocking into work. He told Chen Ge that the operation would be conducted that night, but he did not reveal the exact location and time to Chen Ge. Chen Ge did not press. Actually, he had faith in the law enforcement of Zhejiang. Ten minutes later, Chen Gu arrived at his destination. It was an old, squat-looking apartment building. This was the address that had been given to him by the old lady, the place where Jiang Ming stayed before he was adopted by Jiang Jiao. When he arrived at this place, Chen Gu noticed something very interesting. This was where Fan Yu and his auntie had lived when he first encountered them. Chen Gu had been there several months earlier. The government has been intending to renovate the old part of the city, but the demolition was stopped halfway through. Looks like I have to pay attention to this place. After entering the alley, there was a faded stench that permeated the air. It was unclear whether it came from the underground sewer or one of the tenants. After walking for some time, Chen Gu came to the center of the old city. Jiang Ming's family was staying in one of the flats there. He entered the stairwell. It felt as if the world behind the door had overlapped with the real world. Chen Ge felt like he had just visited to this place the previous night. The sound of an argument came from somewhere down the corridor. Chen Ge looked down that direction. He saw two ladies about thirty standing at the entrance of Jiang Ming's home. They appeared to be workers from the apartment community. They were holding many forms with official-looking stamps on them. Ladies, what's going on? Chen Ge sidled over. He saw that the two women are wearing their working IDs. The one with curly hair had the surname Mei, and the elder one had the surname Li. We are from the neighbor committee. We have received multiple reports of domestic violence from this family. The mother of the house is covered in bruises. We are here to take the woman away and bring her to the hospital for a medical checkup. Ms. Lee used her body to block the door and refused to let the owner close the door. Is the mother home? Why doesn't she come out and go away with you? You have no idea how poor this woman is. She was born mute and deaf, and I believe that multiple beatings from her husband have stunted her mind. It was after we took the fact that the woman is unable to care for herself that we made the decision to forcibly take her away with us. Ms. May started to help her partner. These women were truly angels of the society. They blocked the door and refused with brute force to let the man close the door from the inside. Looks like I have come to the right place. Chinga reached out to press against the door and push very hard. The door was flung backward. Chinga followed behind the two ladies as they entered the room. The smell of alcohol hung in the air, empty bottles littered the room and there were glass shards that needed to be cleaned up sitting on the ground. The tables and chairs were toppled over. The cushions of the couch were left on the ground. Something awful had just happened here earlier. Jiang Dao. If you dare to stop me again, we will call the cops. The two ladies were furious. Go ahead and call then. Who gave you the right to intervene into my family's private business? The man who spoke was bare-chested. He was bald and on the bigger side, tall and imposing. Those threats are not going to work on us. The neighborhood committee has gathered more than enough evidence. We are here today to save her. We will not leave until we take her away with us. Take her away with you? That depends on whether she wants to leave with you or not. The man picked up the cushions from the ground and placed them on the sofa. He grabbed a half-empty bottle of beer and sat in the middle of the living room. The curtain that led to the kitchen was pulled back. A woman wearing a long-sleeved top, long pants, and an apron stood at the door to the kitchen. She wished to take one step out, but she hesitated. The two ladies walked toward her. They wished to pull her out, but the woman kept shaking her hands as if she was very afraid. Ms. Lee kept persuading her as she nudged the woman out of the kitchen. They were making their way through the living room when the man suddenly slammed the beer bottle against the table. What will happen when your son returns if you leave? Do you not want to see him anymore? The man knew that the woman was deaf, so he tossed a clean little school bag at the woman. 
He glared at her and said, I can send him away, so of course, I can bring him back. Jesus, you are one horrible human being. Chen Gu could not rein in his anger anymore. He walked to the middle of the living room, picked up the small school bag, patted it, and handed it to the woman. Take her out of here. Let me talk to him. You? The two ladies accepted the help from Chen Gu, but before they left, they warned him, the man has violent tendencies. You must be careful. I will. Chen Gu nodded. Seeing that Jiang Ming's mother was still unwilling to leave, he knew that she was worried about Jiang Ming, so he took out the letter that he had prepared from his pocket and handed it to her. Take a look at this. Chen Gu had written the letter when he was riding on the taxi. The content of the letter was that he planned to sponsor Jiang Ming's cochlear implant surgery. After Jiang Ming's mother read the conti, nt of the letter, the tears fell naturally out of her eyes. She wanted to thank Chen Gu, but she was stopped by him. Leave here first. After the three ladies left, Chen Gu closed the door. Where the hell did you come from, and what was in the letter that you showed her? The man grabbed the bottle, but he did not move from his spot. It is nothing important. I just persuaded her to divorce you and get away from a horrible man like you as fast as she can. After Chinga said that, the man's expression changed immediately, and the fire of wrath coursed through him. Divorce is impossible. Now get the hell out of my house. There is no need to act so rashly. Chinga took out a credit card from his wallet. There is 150,000 on this card. 150,000 and you wish for me to divorce her? If you like her that much, you will understand that 150,000 is far from enough. The man's eyes had been following the card that Chen Gu was holding ever since he took it out. Looks like you have really never treated them as your family before. They were just objects for you to sell and trade to make money. In any case, you have misunderstood me. This 150,000 is for Jiang Ming's cochlear implant surgery. It has nothing to do with you. Chen Gu put away the card. He saw Jiang Dao's eyes trailing greedily along it. You must be thinking about how you can convince me to give you the money that will help save Jiang Ming, mustn't you? Even though his horrible thoughts had been exposed by Chen Gu, the man did not deny it. He tossed back a mouthful of the beer. Do you know? I was giving you one last chance earlier. If you'd shown the slightest bit of love toward Jiang Ming or your wife, this would not have happened. Chen Gu pressed the play button on the recorder and took out a pair of red high heels and placed them on the table. Instantly, the color of blood filled the whole room. With the cooperation between Su Yin and the red high heels, they shoved a pile of blood vessels that they had collected from the world behind Jiang Ming's door right into Jiang Dao's mind. The blood vessels were filled with Jiang Ming's feeling of helplessness and despair. They included his fear and many other negative emotions. The cherry on top was the curse from the red high heel. Jiang Dao, you will experience what your child has been through. The man who sat on the sofa clamped his hands over his ears like he had been possessed. It appeared like more than a handful of people were currently whispering into his ears. Seeing Jiang Dao being tortured by this, Chen Gu showed no pity at all. What Jiang Dao was experiencing was practically what he had put his own son through, so he merely got what he deserved. A tooth for a tooth as they said. When you have atoned for your sins, perhaps the curse will end on its own. Chen Gu unsummoned Su Yin and the red high heels. He shook his head lightly. I do not have many days left in my life, and I am still going around helping people. Now that I think about it, I am such a noble person. Chapter 1008, Boat of Master, the man hugged his head and screamed while Chen Gu turned around and pushed open the door. Please come in and help me. I don't know what came over him. The two ladies looked into the room and saw the large Jiang Dao covering his ears, rolling on the ground. He was about to swing the bottle at me, but this suddenly happened. It gave me quite the shock. Chen Gu walked to hide behind the two ladies. You know that I was in there for less than a few minutes. 
Do you think this is some kind of scam to trick medical fees out of me? With this man's personality, that's not impossible, but don't worry, we can be your witnesses. We will not let him scam someone as kind-hearted as you. Miss Lee looked down on Jiang Dao and hated him intensely. The two women stood to the side and observed. This was the first time that they had seen something like this. How about we call the ambulance? We can't just allow him to do this. Everything should be cleared up when the doctor is here, Chinga suggested. You are too kind. We should just ignore him and let him experience the pain for a while. Ms. May had a sharp tongue but soft heart. After a while, she still called the emergency number. The ambulance carried Jiang Dao away. Jiang Ming's mother sidled up to Chin Gu with the letter. She kept gesturing something like she was trying to say something. Don't worry. Chin Gu knew that the woman would not hear him even if he spoke, so he asked for help from the ladies next to him. Ms. Lee, actually, I knew about this family's situation before I came. Can we find a private place to talk? Sure. The two ladies led Chin Gu and Jiang Ming's mother back to the neighborhood watch's headquarter. They found some stationery and placed them on the table. Please calm down. I will help you refresh your memory first. Chin Gu picked up the pencil from the table and started to write. That was the only way the two could communicate with each other. I know you are familiar with the art of horsetail embroidery. You can survive independently with this art. In fact, you used to make money using this skill. Do you still remember who taught you this skill? Seeing the words on the paper, Jiang Ming's mother was shocked. She held the pencil, but she did not know what to write. You should remember the old lady living on the second floor above your flat. I am her relative. Before the old lady passed away, she worried about Jiang Ming the most. She had a soft place in her heart for that little guy. What Chinga wrote was the truth. Now that the old lady was inside his comic, she would live in his haunted house in the future, and thus, she was naturally his family. The mention of the old lady caused the mother's emotions to get more agitated again. This was the second time that she teared up after meeting. Chen Gu. The time of misfortune has passed. After this, you will enjoy a happy life with Jiang Ming. Chen Gu turned to the two ladies. The earlier the cochlear implant surgery is done, the better. I have prepared 150,000 and I will find the doctor as soon as possible. But I will be a bit busy the next few days, and I might need help from the neighborhood committee. Just say the word, and we are ready to help. The neighbor and the women's committee know about her family's situation. We will help as much as we can. Understood. At the end of the day, we only want the best for them. Chenga had no idea how much money was on his card. He had not taken account of his haunted house's income from the past few months, but it would not be less than 200,000. After a few days, the mission for the ghost fetus would be over. If everything was successful, he would earn more money, but if there was a problem, it would not matter how much money sat in his card. Chengu was not a stingy person but he wished to spend money on the right thing. Wait a moment. Chenga took out his phone and called the number for a hospital in Xian Hai. After explaining the situation, he made an online appointment with the doctor recommended by Dr. Wei. The doctor's name was Fang Jiming. After getting Dr. Fang's number, Chenga sat in the neighborhood's committee's headquarters and made the call several times, but no one answered. Just as he was about to give up, the call was finally pulled through. Is this Dr. Fong? The other side of the phone was unusually quiet. He could not hear any sound. After a long time, a middle-aged man's voice finally replied. I am sorry, but I am temporarily not available for any appointments. It's Wei Jiuqin who told me to find you. Chen Good dropped Dr. Wei's name immediately. Who? When you were studying at Jiaojiang Medical University? I'm asking who you are. My teacher passed many years ago. I was there to give him the send-off. You'd better not joke about something like this. 
Dr. Fong was angered, but from this, it showed that he still had a great deal of respect for Wei Jiuqin. Actually, Dr. Wei was my relative. He admired you a lot and often mentioned you to me. Chen Gu said something that only Dr. Wei and Fang Jiming would know, and only then did the latter start to believe Chen Gu. I think I get what is going on already, but for now, I am unable to help the boy do the operation. Fang Jiming sounded increasingly tired. Lately, I have been spacing out at work, and some time ago, there was a medical incident. Currently, I am in no position to conduct surgery. I still need some time to recuperate. What happened to you? Chen Gu could hear the lethargy in Fang Jiming's voice like it drained him even to speak. Actually, it was nothing serious. Previously, the hospital was renovating an old sector. I found a letter in the old storeroom. I opened it out of curiosity, and the letter told to go to some abandoned hospital in the middle of the night. If I refused, I would have hell to pay. Never mind, why am I telling you this? It's fine. Perhaps I can give you a good suggestion. Even if I can't help you, it is better to share this with others than to have it cooped up inside you. Chen Ji's interest was piqued. The letter was probably some prank from a patient. I did not think too much of it, but later, I kept having this recurring nightmare. I dreamed about this smiling person. Fang Jiming sighed. The man stood under my building every night at the same position, staring at my window. A smiling person? Instantly the term non-smiler appeared in Chen Ji's mind. Initially, I thought it was because of work pressure getting to me. But one night, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw the curtain fluttering. I climbed out of bed, attempting to close the window, and when I was by the window, I saw that there was this man with his giant grin standing under my building, just like the scenario from my dream. Are you being followed by some strange admirer? I have no clue, but that man only appeared once and never showed up after that. But my work and life have both been seriously affected. My mind keeps wander to this issue. Fang Jiming was in a bad spot. You are my beloved teacher's relative, but in my condition, I really cannot help you. However, I can recommend other good doctors to you. Bring the boy over as soon as you can. The earlier the cochlear implant surgery is done, the better. Dr. Fong, I will bring the boy over as soon as I can, but other than that, I have run into the situation that you mentioned earlier. Chen Gu lowered his voice. Certain things cannot be explained so openly. Trust me this time. I will recommend a contact of mine. He is a good friend of Dr. Wei's. If you feel like you have reached your breaking point, you need to contact him. My teacher's friend? When you communicate with him, you have to remember one thing. Do not hide anything from him. Only by telling him everything you know will he be able to help you. Chen Gu sent the man his other social account. I do not know that man's real name, but Dr. Wei called him the votive master. Chapter 1009, Wu Jinping If it was Chen Gu who asked for more details, Fang Jiming might clam up due to certain reasons, but if the person was Dr. Wei's friend, the situation might be different. Fang Jiming had true respect for Dr. Wei. When he was truly cornered, he would choose to believe in Dr. Wei's friend. From what Chen Gu heard, Fang Jiming had probably gotten tied up with that cursed hospital. The appearance of a non-smiler was an obvious clue. But he had no ability and no time to help, so he could only use this kind of method. Chen Gu gave Fang Jiming his other social account information, and Fang Jiming introduced Chen Gu to another doctor and gave him the contact number. Hanging up the phone, Chen Gu looked at Jiang Ming's mother and tried to explain the situation. Jiang Ming's mother wrote many things down on the paper. Other than showing her appreciation, she told Chen Gu that she had been saving up. Currently, she had about 30,000. She planned to use all of that to help Jiang Ming with his surgery. Chen Gu would pay the rest for now, but she promised to return the money. You need to take care of Jiang Ming, and you will need that money to survive. Let's not argue on that for now. Chen Gu knew that Jiang Jiao would not let the boy go so easily, 
and they would not agree to help Jiang Ming with his surgery because once Jiang Ming recovered his hearing, it might ruin the ghost fetus plan. Thus, they had to stop it the best they could. Chen Gu did not plan to the get into that. If Jiang Jia refused, he would ask for help from the police and the women's association. In seven days' time, we will go to Exion High City together. If you can't contact me, go straight to the haunted house at New Century Park. Someone will hand you the money. Chen Gu had already set up his plan. He would first deal with the ghost fetus and then focus all of his energy on the cursed hospital. Of course, the premise was that he had to be able to kill the ghost fetus. The traces of the cursed hospital can be seen everywhere. I feel like if I don't go to them, they will come for me. After all, I have received the invitation to join the cursed game. After dealing with the issue on this side, Chinga left after leaving behind his contact number. Later tonight, I will go to Fang Yu's home and see if a door appears after she falls asleep. If everything is successful, I can eliminate three people from the roster, and six children will be left. Six nights, six children, Chen Gu was not as worried as before. This probably had to do with his personality. After the initial panic, he became unusually calm. Walking out of the dirty alley, Chen Gu took out his phone and looked through his contact list to find the number of Wu Xing's father. After the teacher at Peiji Academy gave Chen Gu his number, he had not called it yet. The call rang for a long time, and just as Chen Gu was about to hang up, the call was connected. Hello, who is this? There were many different sounds in the background. Wu Xing's father appeared to be on some busy street, and there was a lot of bustle around him. My name is Chen Gu. My relative's child is in the same situation as your son. We plan to send our child to your son's school. But the tuition is very expensive, so I wanted to ask for your opinion to get your perspective on this. No problem. I am at work now. We will meet up at the gate of Peiji Academy around 5 p.m. The man's voice was hoarse and stood out. Thank you. At 5 p.m., school was over at Peiji Academy. The children walked out from their classrooms accompanied by their teachers. After a while, Chinga spotted Wu Xing. The boy who seemed to lack interest in everything kept turning his head around with anxiety on his face, like he was looking for someone. Don't wander about. I'm sure your father will be here soon. Before the teacher finished, a man's voice came from the distance. Wu Xing. Unlike the other parents who came in cars or motorcycles, the man was riding a rather old-looking bicycle. A bag was slung over his shoulder, and he had a short ponytail. The unkempt beard did not make him appear disheveled, but strangely enough, gave him a sense of maturity. Son. I'm here. I'm sorry, coming through. Even though he was riding a bicycle whose paint was peeling, the man was very confident and made it feel like he had come in a lavish car. When the man came over, the anxiety in Wu Xing's eyes decreased significantly and he returned to his usual self. Teacher, has my son improved today? He did well today. Be careful on the road. Her job completed, the teacher turned back into the school. That's not bad. The teacher said you have improved today. We should celebrate. How does two dishes for dinner sound? The man carried Wu Xing in his arm and then placed the boy on the back of the bicycle. Then he looked around. Son, wait for daddy a moment. I promised to meet with a friend today. He took out his phone and was about to call when Chen Gu walked over. You are Wu Xing's father, right? When he got closer, Chen Gu realized that even though the man before him was a bit carefree with his appearance, he had a good presence and was quite handsome. Chen Gu? Yes, that's me. I have some questions that I hope to ask you. We're blocking up the traffic. Let's chat while we move. The man pushed his bicycle and continued to move forward. Chen Gu pushed the bicycle that he had rented from the public service and followed along. If they walked, it would take too long, and they might finish the chat on the journey, but Chen Ji's real purpose was to get to Wu Xing's room and stay until midnight. Brother, how should I address you? 
My name is Wu Jinpeng, one, but you can call me Brother Peng. The man had a good personality and was kind to others. He was another extreme from Wu Sheng and formed a great contrast. You mentioned earlier that your family's child has the same condition as Wu Sheng, right? Where is he now? Am I right in assuming it's a boy? Perhaps we should introduce him to Wu Sheng. They might have a shared language. Brother Peng, my boy's situation is worse than Wu Xing's. Not only does he refuse to speak, he has this tendency to paint pictures that scares adults. Chen Go pulled down his face. Little brother, listen to me. When Wu Xing was younger, his condition was worse than now. He did not know how to speak, and he had nightmares every night. He would throw things about like he was possessed. Possessed? Chen Gok showed the appropriate shocked look. That is the same as the child of my relative. This is such a coincidence. What the? Really? Yes, and it is very serious, and that's why I wish to transfer him here. Even though the tuition is a bit expensive, I saw how professional the staff are, and the environment is better than most places. Chen Gok sighed. I come from a normal family, but for the children it does not matter if life becomes a bit more difficult for us adults. Little brother, it's not easy on you either, huh? Wu Jinping looked at Chen Gu and felt like he had found a kindred spirit. Don't worry about it too much, I am sure the boys will get better with time. Brother Peng, I really have many things that I wish to ask you. If it's not too much trouble, do you mind if we go to your place so that we can talk about this further? Why not? That's no problem at all. Wu Jinping agreed easily. The three rode the bicycles and came to the area near a small apartment in western Zhejiang. Chapter 1010 Potential New Employee Wu Jinping lived at an old apartment. The house was at least 30 years old. The family of three squeezed inside a small room of 20 cubic meters. The toilet was adjacent to the kitchen, and the rooms were separated by curtains. The place is a bit cramped. I hope you don't mind it. I plan to move to a bigger place next month. As Wu Jinping opened the door, a big yellow dog rushed over, wagging its tail. It was friendly with Wu Jinping and Wu Xing, but snarled warningly when it saw Chen Go. Down boy. Sorry about that. Ol Huang is a stray. He has been chased away by many people, so he isn't keen on strangers. Once you get close to him, though, you'll see how friendly and warm he is. Wu Jinping grabbed Ol Huang by the fur on his head as he invited Chen Gu into the room. The cement floor was not tiled, and a lot of paraphernalia filled the room, but the place was neatly organized. As small as the place was, it did not feel dirty or disorganized. Xiao Kuan, we have a guest. Please pour us two glasses of tea. Wu Jinping shouted into the room. Moments later, the curtain was pulled open to reveal a dullish young man walking out with an electric fan. Fan. I know. You prepare the tea, and I'll fix the fan. Wu Jinping tried to take the fan away from the young man, but the young man slid away from him, refusing to let go of the fan. Fan. Bloody hell, I promise to buy you a new fan after I get my salary, okay? Wu Jinping was embarrassed as he looked Chen Gu. This is my younger brother. He got into an accident when he was young and injured his brain. He might look dull, but he is actually very clever. In primary school, he was a very good student. His results were always in the top 10. His son did not know how to speak and his brother had a brain injury, life had been difficult for Wu Jinping, but he still felt proud of his family. Chen Gu admired a man like that. Brother Peng, I ordered something on the way here. Later, we can chat over dinner. I have many questions for you. You should not have done that. You're my guest. I should have treated you, not the other way round. It's me who has questions for you. Treating you is the least I can do. The delivery soon arrived. Other than food, Chen Gu had ordered some alcohol. The family sat on the blanket in the middle of the room. As simple of it was, it was very close and warm. 
Wu Sheng and Wu Jinping's brother appeared like they had not had such a feast in a long time, and they wolfed everything. Seeing how happy they were, Wu Jinping's eyes softened. He picked up a bottle of beer and took a generous gulp. Brother Peng, is that a family picture on the cupboard? Chen Gu pointed at the picture above the cupboard. It was a picture of three people. A young Wu Jinping stood in the middle. On his left was his younger brother, and on his right stood a pregnant woman. Yes, the woman is Wu Xing's mother. She left after giving birth to Wu Xing. She was one hell of a woman, but I was incapable of convincing her to stay. Wu Jinping chuckled as he took another sip. Brother, you have treated us very nicely tonight. Should you have any questions, please feel free to ask. If I know anything, I will try my best to answer. Brother Peng, since you are being so open, I will not hide the truth from you. Chin Guk clinked his bottle against Wu Jinping's and whispered, Actually, my relative's boy is a bit different from normal. He has some unique symptoms. I have been holding this in for a long time, and I don't quite know how to talk about it. Take your time. There's no need to rush. It's not that. I'm just afraid that you might not believe me. Chin Gu sidled closer to the Wu Jinping. One night, I came home late from work, and I saw a door standing next to his bed. When he said that, Chin Ji's eyes stared at Wu Jinping. When Wu Jinping heard that, his body shivered slightly. At the time, I was shocked. Why would there be a door that suddenly appeared in the room? Chen Ji's brows were screwed together, acting the part of a scared family member. I wanted to get closer, but before I could do that, the child woke up. When he did, the door disappeared. Initially, I thought that I was too tired from work, but the next night, the door appeared again. Have you tried to enter that door before? Wu Jinping's follow-up question helped Chen Gu confirm that the man knew about the door. Normally, when a person heard a story as strange as that, they would first question its validity, and the question would be related to the door. They would not ask directly whether he had entered the door or not. The fact that Wu Jinping had asked that meant that he not only knew about the door, but had quite possibly entered the door before. The two men held the bottles and looked at each other for a while. Chen Gu took a big swig to calm his nerves and shook his head. I have not. Good. Wu Jinping sighed in relief. He took the bottle, but before his lips reached the bottle, he heard Chen Gu ask, What about you? The bottle froze in midair. It took Wu Jinping a while to recover. He stood up to close the door and window. Brother, come over here. Wu Jinping waved at Chen Gu. They pulled open the curtain and came to the other room. There was a single bed in the room and a bare mattress on the ground. Normally, Wu Xing sleeps in this bed. My younger brother, Wu Kuan, and I sleep in the living room, and the curtain separates the room. A few days ago, Wu Xing kept turning in bed at night like he had trouble sleeping. Initially, I did not think much of it, but at midnight one night, Wu Xing started to roll and turn around so I looked over and saw a black shadow behind the curtain. Wu Jinping gestured wildly, agitated. It was just like the movies. I quietly approached, and when I pulled open the curtain, I saw Wu Xing staring at me with his eyes open. I did this for several nights, before I got a clear glimpse of the shadow. It was like what you said. It was a door, a door standing in the dark. Whenever I switch on the light or Wu Xing wakes up, the door disappears. Anyone would be afraid if this happened. The day before yesterday, I planned to open the door, but I can't push it open no matter what, and that was quite maddening. Wu Jinping sat on the bed. I haven't told anyone about this, because I'm afraid they might think I'm crazy. If you can't push it open alone, how about both of us try it together later tonight? Chen Ji's brows slowly relaxed. Since we're facing the same situation, we should consider helping each other. That sounds doable, but I'm afraid of putting you in danger. It's fine. We'll be on the lookout for each other. It's better than being in danger alone. Brother, you're too kind. I don't even know what to say. You're much too welcome. 
The world behind the door was very dangerous. Even though Chen Gu promised to go with Wu Jinping, at the last moment, he would block Wu Jinping and enter alone. Let's return to dinner and prepare ourselves for tonight. The issue having been dealt with, Chen Ji's admiration for Wu Jinping grew. He even considered offering him a job at his haunted house if Wu Jinping was in real financial trouble. Chapter 1011 Wuxing's world the door represented different things to Chen Gu and Wu Jinping. When night fell, Wu Jinping had drunk a lot, and in his drunken state, his armor slowly fell away. Tiredness appeared in his eyes. He hid it well behind a cheerful front normally and never showed it before even his family. Wu Xing, it's time for bed. Tomorrow morning, I'll take you to school. Wu Jinping carried Wu Xing to his bed. Good night, buddy. After taking care of the young one, he needed to deal with the older one. He pulled back the curtain and sat next to his younger brother. Kuan Air, stop playing with the electric fan. If you feel hot, I'll bring you the fan. Fan. Wu Kuan raised the electric fan with both hands. He jogged around the room, refusing to surrender at Wu Jinping. Slow down, or you're going to wake the neighbors. Wu Jinping appeared quite helpless. He sat back by the table. I'm sorry for the trouble my brother is causing. Brother Pong, I fixed a broken fan at my workplace before. How about I help you fix this? When Chin Gu first took over the haunted house, he had been forced to learn many things, including installing the cameras and familiarizing himself with the wiring. I don't actually want to fix the fan. Wu Jinping took another sip of the alcohol. Look at my brother's left finger. He once stuck his hand into the fan. Oh, understood. My biggest wish now is for Wu Xing to grow up like a normal child, and my second wish is to buy an air conditioner. My younger brother hasn't experienced that before. If he knew how good an air conditioner is, he would definitely abandon that broken electric fan. The rental place was small. Wu Jinping leaned against the wall, held the bottle with one hand, and scratched the dog behind his ears with his other hand. Brother Peng, you sound like a person with a story. There's still some time before midnight. Mind telling me about your past? Chen Gu wanted to offer Wu Jinping a job, so he needed to know everything that he could about Wu Jinping. What story can I have? My whole life is a trail of interesting incidents. Wu Jinping was slightly drunk. Brother, can you have a guess at the most expensive item in this place? How am I supposed to guess that? The place did not even have a television set. Chen Gu looked around and the most expensive thing appeared to be the broken electric fan Wu Jinping's brother was hugging. I'll show it to you. Wu Jinping opened the wooden box in the corner. A guitar sat inside. This is not the practice kind. It's very expensive. You know how to play the guitar? Chen Gu had a new appreciation for Wu Jinping, and his admiration for this man grew another level. I used to study music and was a street musician for many years. It was then that I met Wu Xing's mother. Wu Jinping picked up the guitar, but probably afraid of waking the neighbors, he did not play. He merely moved his fingers over the strings, plucking it several times in the air. Wu Xing's mother was my fan. She was eight years younger than me. She was a very nice person, so even when she abandoned us, I did not blame her one bit. I mean, take a look around, who can blame her? With the alcohol on the table, a stray lying next to them, and an old guitar in his embrace, the two men sat inside the small room, discussing the past and life. Do you still play on the street? I gave that up a long time ago. I used to dream about writing my own song. Even if I couldn't become a singer, I wanted to be in the music industry. But as you know, life has a way of throwing you curveballs. Between the choice of my dream and bread, I chose the latter. Wu Jinping closed his eyes, and his fingers caressed the strings gently. I was such a rebellious child. I only saw the world from my perspective. There was a period when I thought the name my parents gave me was too old-fashioned, so I had my name changed quietly. Oh man, that angered the old man. 
Opening his eyes, Wu Jinping took another swig. Thinking back to the way the old man glared at me for those few days, I still get the giggles. Unfortunately, I can't even see him anymore. What happened to him? During the year Wu Xun was born, my parents went to Xi'an Hai to have their medical checkup, but they got caught in a car accident. Wu Jinping emptied the bottle. Actually, I wonder if it was a car accident. They probably got some bad news from the report and felt like they should not add to my burden. The room became so quiet. Wu Kuan was getting tired from all the running. He hugged the electric fan and leaned against the wall. So, are you the one looking after the whole family now? Chen Gu could sense the lethargy radiating from Wu Jinping. He needed to take care of his mentally stunted younger brother and had to earn enough for Wu Xing's tuition. He was the center of this family. Yes, but you get used to it after a while. Wu Jinping put down the guitar. Someone once told me, life is nothing but a struggle to continue living. I think that was a rather pessimistic look on life. We cannot guarantee what kind of life we will be born into, but the type of attitude we use to view our life, that is completely on us. I often tell Wu Xing how beautiful and wonderful this world is because I hope he will grow up with those dreams in his mind. One day, I promise I will take him to witness those beauties and wonders of the world in person. Brother Peng, you are a good father. Chen Ge raised the glass to Wu Jinping. I think so too, but the teachers at the school keep telling me not to input such impossible dreams in the boy's mind, and I have to focus on teaching him practical living skills. Wu Jinping's unusual grouse about the teachers caused Chen Ge to laugh. He had a good chat with Wu Jinping. Actually, when Chen Ge first met Wu Jinping, he had felt that the man was unique. The despair and difficulty in life did not knock him down but polished and highlighted in the beauty in his soul. Chen Ge did not expect this, even the ghost fetus could not have foreseen this. Chen Ge did not know what standard the ghost fetus used to choose the children, but most of the candidates had a shared quality. They were lacking something in life, and they were extremely depressed or isolated. Based on Jiang Ming's situation, one could see that the greater the despair and pain the child was feeling, the scarier the world behind the door, and the better they could relate to the ghost fetus. If considered from this perspective, the chance of Wu Xing being possessed by the ghost fetus was low because he had such a wonderful father. The two chatted for a while. When it was 11 p.m., they cleared away the dining utensils, closed the lights, and waited beside the curtain. At midnight, a shadow appeared behind the curtain. Chen Ge signaled at Wu Jinping. There were many red specters in his backpack. Once he got close, the door would rattle noisily to wake Wu Xing, and the door would disappear. Chen Ge grabbed his backpack, and as he moved forward with Wu Jinping, he suddenly lunged forward and slammed the door open. The door lock rattled. When Wu Jinping recovered, Chen Ge and the door had both disappeared. What the? Brother, where are you? Opening his eyes, Chen Gu was standing inside a dark alley. A light blood mist hung in the air, and the sound of teeth grinding could be heard in his ears. This is the world behind Wuxing's door? This place looks like the old city. Chapter 1012, Son Lip Chen Gu had been to the old city that the morning, and the place looked familiar. Wuxing used to leave in the old city? They didn't move from western Zhejiang to eastern Zhejiang? Rather than hurrying, Chen Gu turned to look behind him. He saw a large iron door that blocked the alley. This door is similar to the iron door in Jiang Ming's world. He noticed one detail. When I visited Jiang Ming's old apartment, I didn't encounter such a door at the apartment. It wasn't part of his memory. Now that I'm in Wu Xing's world, this iron door has appeared again. He studied it closer. Chen Ge did not notice anything off about the door. This means that the iron door, which is the entrance and exit, probably has nothing to do with the children, but everything to do with the ghost fetus. With this in mind, Chen Ge studied the door closer. It did not have any writing or symbols on it, but once he leaned in, he could smell a very light scent of blood and disinfectant. The world behind the door is made up from the children's memories. 
This door carries the smell of blood and disinfectant in someone's memory. Could the owner of this memory have once been locked up in a hospital? But even a normal hospital shouldn't have a black iron door like this. Chin Gu had visited two of the children's worlds, and there were many things that he could not confirm. He looked at the door further before moving his eyes away. I'd better find Wu Xing behind the door first. This world is different from what I anticipated. Chen Gu had chatted with Wu Jinping for a long time. The father was like an umbrella that shielded Wu Xing. Theoretically speaking, Wu Xing's world should not be too dark, but after Chen Gu entered this place, he realized how wrong he was. The streets were permanently dark, and many scary voices came from the corner. Looks like the ghost fetus has done something. That crazed man will not let his candidates live in happiness. He envies love and warmth the most. Chin Gu communicated with the pen spirit and Suin. They were unable to materialize quickly, this world was rejecting them. To Chin Ji's consternation, compared to Jiang Ming's world, Wu Xing's world rejected them even more. The resistance that the employees felt was harder. I need to buy some time for them. Chin Gu did not think that the ghost fetus would hide in this world, but he could not be careless. If ghost fetus was really there, he might lose his life due to his carelessness. The doors next to the children's beds are all flickering. They are far from real doors. I suspect that only one of them is real, and the other eight are made by the ghost fetus to fool others. Taking out the hammer, Chin Gu walked down the street. Wu Xing's world was much bigger than Jiang Ming's world, it included a whole street. Chen Gu took several steps when he frowned. The noises around him grew louder. They crawled into his ears like dancing bugs, and it unsettled him. Sometimes it's not a good thing to have overly sensitive senses. Chen Gu held his breath and used his Yang vision. The darkness did not affect him too much. I can't even see a shadow, so where is the sound coming from? He did not rush down the street. The place was complicated and windy, he could easily get lost if he was not careful. In any case, before Suin and the rest could appear, Chin Ji's goal was to survive. Pushing open the door of one of the nearest buildings, Chin Ge realized that the noises in his ears grew louder, and one of them became clear enough to be identified as crying. The crying is coming from this place? Chin Ge looked into the house. The houses in the old city were not big. Normally, they only had one to three rooms, and he soon found the source of the crying. There was a girl washing her hair in the bathroom. She was facing away from Chen Gu, and she looked to be in her teens. Crying while washing her hair? The girl collected a basin of water and placed it at the edge of the sink. She plunged her whole head into the water, and her hair was soaked in the water. The sound of water and crying were mixed together, giving off a chilling feeling. This was the first person whom Chen Gu had encountered in Wu Xing's world. For the sake of safety, Chen Gu gripped the hammer and slowly approached. This girl is alone in the room. There's no need to be afraid of an ambush. I should make use of this chance to get to know her. Chen Gu moved lightly, but even so, he was discovered when he was halfway toward to the girl. The girl stopped washing her hair. Her hands were stuck in her hair as her whole person froze beside the sink. The hair was pulled back, and a pair of black eyes peeped through the gap in the curtain of hair. The girl turned around to look at Chen Gu. The head that was soaked in the basin slowly broke the surface of the water. The hair that floated in the basin was crusted with dried blood. Chen Gu only then noticed that the basin was not filled with water but blood that was drying. The blood slid down her hair and onto her clothes. The clean pink pajamas were dyed red by the blood. Even in Jiang Ming's twisted world, there was no sign of fresh blood. What is going on in Wu Xing's world? Why is it so gory even at the beginning? The girl's face fully appeared. She had beautiful eyes, and her nose was small and cute, one that garnered a sense of protectiveness in others. Below it was her mouth. She had pretty lips, but her lips were sewn together by black threads. Chen Gu confirmed that the crying came from the girl, but the girl did not look like she was crying. 
Can you hear my voice? It was hard to imagine what had happened to the girl from her appearance and why she would appear behind the door in this state. Chen Gu tried to communicate with her, but the girl reacted strangely. The girl's fair hands plunged into the water and picked up a dirty cat from inside the basin. Then, like she was wringing a towel dry, she gripped the cat's head with one hand and its body with the other and started to twist with all her might. Tons of fresh blood squeezed out from the cat. Once the cat was dry, the girl picked up the dirty cat carcass and used it to dry her blood-soaked hair. When she was done, the girl tossed the mangled cat back into the water basin and turned to look at Chen Gu. She stared Chen Ji's mouth. Her hands entered her pockets to pull out a long bronze needle and thick black thread. What is she planning to do? The girl's eyes had not left Chen Ji's lips. Holding the needle and thread, she walked toward Chen Gu. She walked faster and faster before she lunged at Chen Gu. The needle aimed at Chen Ji's mouth like she was going to sew it shut. You started this first. Chen Gu was ready. He swung the hammer at the girl. The girl's shoulder caved in, but it did not affect her mobility at all. In self-defense, Chen Gu kept slamming the hammer against the girl while he tried to evade. After nine consecutive smashes, the girl temporarily lost the ability to move. She crawled on the ground, still holding on to the needle and thread. I haven't done anything to her, why would she suddenly attack me and want to sew up my mouth? Chen Gu put down the hammer. He looked at the girl on the ground and the mangled cat in the water basin, and a possibility occurred to him. The girl was torturing the cat and was accidentally spotted by Wu Xin. That's why she wanted to sew up Wu Xing's mouth so that he would not be able to reveal her secrets to anyone else. Since he had no idea what had happened in real life, he could only make predictions based on his observation of this absurd world. Chapter 1013 Faceless Woman with a Red Hair Clip A Cute Girl Using Blood to Wash Her Hair Chen Gu did not expect to see something like that inside Wu Xing's world. Even though Wu Jinping has been trying his best to protect Wu Xing, it looks like the boy has still seen many things that he shouldn't. The pressure on them was far greater than described by Wu Jinping. The girl's body was slowly recovering. Chen Gu knew that it would be difficult for him to kill her. He took away the girl's needle and thread. He closed the door and used things to block the door. He did not know whether that was useful or not, but it was worth a try. After leaving the first house, Chen Gu knew that he could not let his guard down inside Wu Xing's world. This boy had been through a lot more than Jiang Ming, the world in his eyes was bigger and more complicated. Chen Gu had a feeling that every building on this street hid a secret. Once he entered them, he would see other secrets, and then he would be chased by others to have his lips sewn together. He did not want to enter them, but if he did not, how was he going to find Wu Xing? Calm yourself. When Su Yin can appear, I can explore the place further. For now, I should keep a low profile. Chen Gu was very careful, and he was not going to take unnecessary risk. This was his experience showing after completing so many trial missions. Hugging the hammer, Chen Gu hid in the next alley. That way, if there was an accident, he had two exits to escape from. The plan was good, but he did not need to wait for too long for a tragedy to happen. A woman wearing a red hairpin appeared on the other side of the street. She wandered along the street aimlessly. Occasionally, she would slip into one of the buildings, as if looking for something. Before the woman got close, Chen Gu got the warning from Su Yin, this woman was very dangerous. She was not a red specter, but she gave off a dangerous presence that threatened Su Yin, so Chen Gu had to be careful. He moved away from the woman, but the woman seemed to have targeted him because she soon appeared again. This repeated several times until Chen Gu had no choice but to hide in one of the buildings. He rushed up to the second floor. Chen Gu leaned against the window and looked down, he was finally given a closer view of the woman. Her long, luscious black hair hid a faceless face. The woman wandered the streets for a while, before leaving. She appeared to have trouble harming anyone inside the houses. Chin Ji's attention was pulled by the faceless woman when a noise grew in his ears. 
It was hard to describe. It sounded like a couple kissing wetly. Footsteps then came from inside the house. It was too late for Chen Bu to leave. The door was opened, and a monster with two heads appeared at the door. The monster was impeccably dressed in a western suit. It looked normal below the neck, but above the shoulders, it had two heads, one male and one female. The two heads were stuck together, like they were unwilling to part. Chin Gook glanced into the room and saw a large wedding picture placed on the headboard. The man in the picture had the same face as the monster, but the monster's female head was different from the bride in the picture. An extramarital affair? The monster's lips were also sewn tight by black thread. After they saw Chin Gu, they reacted the same way as the girl washing her hair. They took out a needle and thread from their suit pockets and charged at Chen Gu to sew his lips. Sewing the lips mean to keep a secret, are they afraid that I might expose them? The sound of wet kisses grew in his ears, and it aggravated Chen Gu. He did not mind the expression of love, but people should mind themselves when they were in public. Seeing how clingingly sweet you two are, for some reason, I feel the urge to smash the CR asterisk P out of you. Chen Gu did not waste time and charged at them with the hammer. At that moment, the door from the opposite side opened. A large man, who was at least a head taller than Chen Gu ran out and grabbed Chen Gu. Come with me. Who are you? The large man did not explain. He grabbed Chen Ji's arm and started to run downstairs. They ran down the street and hid inside another old building. The man looked buff, but had strangely low stamina. They did not run for that long, but he was already dying from lack of oxygen. While the man held the wall to catch his breath, Chen Gu studied the man. You are Wu Jinpeng? When Chen Gu saw the man's face, he was shocked. Why are you here? Do you know me? When the man heard Chen Gu call him by his name, he was also baffled. Have we met each other before? Seeing the man's reaction, it slowly dawned on Chen Gu. This Wu Jinpeng was not the Wu Jinpeng in real life, it was one from Wu Xing's memory. That explained why this Wu Jinpeng was much larger and taller than the real Wu Jinpeng. In Wu Xing's eyes, his father was large, protective, kind, and wonderful. Jiang Ming's father had also made an appearance in his world, but in comparison, while they were both first time fathers, in the eyes of their children, the character of a father could not have been more different. Brother, what is going on in this world? Why does everyone want to sew up my lips? Chen Gu had been in the world behind Wu Xing's door for some time already, and Wu Jinping was the first normal person that he had met and probably the only normal person that he would meet. I don't know what happened to them. I went to sleep very early last night, and when I woke up, the sky was dark, and the monsters were everywhere. Wu Jinpeng looked afraid. Other than monsters, have you seen anyone else? No, only monsters. If you stay anywhere too long, they will come after you to sew your lips, bite your body, suck your blood, and crush you. Wu Jinpeng's large body was filled with wounds, and the fear in his eyes could not be hidden. Only monsters? Has even your family turned into monsters? Chen Gu was confused. This was Wu Xing's world, but he still had not seen Wu Xing. When Chen Gu said that, Wu Jinpeng was stunned slightly. His mouth was hanging half open. He paused for a moment before nodding. Yes. Brother, don't lie to me. We only have a chance of escaping this place if we are being honest with each other. Chen Gu could see that Wu Jinpeng was lying, he definitely knew where Wu Xing was. Let's not talk about this anymore. We can't stay here for too long. Wu Jinpeng looked out the window. Not good, she's after me again. Chen Gu followed Wu Jinpeng's gaze, and the faceless woman with the red hair clip had materialized out of nowhere again. Chapter 1014 Daddy is playing a game with them after you? Why would that woman be after you? Chen Gu also walked to the window. The faceless woman with the red hair clip, Chen Gu noticed, had been purposely following them. How should I know? I don't even know her. Wu Jinpeng did not look like he was lying. 
The eyes, when he saw the woman only spoke of fear, there were no other emotions mixed within. Why are you so afraid of this woman? Chinga asked another question that he had no answer to. Is she going to kill you? What will happen to you if she manages to catch up to you? After hearing Chin Ji's question, it was Wu Jinping's turn to use a strange gaze to study Chin Gu. Isn't it scary enough to be chased by a faceless woman? Brother, if she'd managed to catch up to me, do you think I'd still be able to stand here to have this conversation with you? I mean, perhaps we do not need to keep avoiding her. If we do not try to understand her, we will never beat her, and being caught is just a matter of time. Before Chin Gu could convince Wu Jinping, the faceless woman had already reached the downstairs of the building that they were in. Her head that was dangling downward slowly lifted as she looked upward. The face that was devoid of all the features seemed to be staring at Wu Jinping. The woman completely ignored Chin Gu, who was standing next to him. The red hair clip appeared to be dripping blood. The pregnancy dress that did not fit her body dragged on the ground. Why are you standing there spacing out? We need to leave. Wu Jinping dragged Chin Gu into the room next door. After she comes up here, we will jump down from the window of the second floor. As long as we can disappear from her line of sight, we will be able to get a brief period of peace. This was not the first time that Wu Jinping had done something like that. His movement was practiced and familiar. The physique that was much stronger and bigger than his actual body in real life enabled him to do many high-difficulty activities. It was a piece of cake for him to jump down from a second-story window. Quick, come down now. Standing next to the window, Chin Gu hesitated for a small moment. But within that brief second, the door behind him suddenly started to vibrate like something was hammering against the door. He had no better idea. Chen Gu hugged the backpack and leaped out the window. He landed on both of his feet and rolled to neutralize the falling impact. Chen Gu did not have time to check the condition of the items inside the backpack to see whether they had survived the fall because he could hear Wu Jinping urging him to move on already. The two guys crawled up from the ground and raced toward the other side of the street as fast as they could. Where are we going now? I really have no clue. No matter where you go, you will be chased by that monster. The only thing we can do is run as far away from her as we can. And then we will repeat this whole process when she reappears. Wu Jinping answered without turning his head around. The words slipped out between hungry mouthfuls of air. He had no idea when he would be able to escape from danger. It was as if the whole world was his enemy, everywhere he turned, there was a monster, and he was being constantly chased by a faceless woman that he could not shake loose. Taking a break had become something of a luxury. Chen Gu studied Wu Jinping, who had not stopped running since they met each other. Slowly but surely, Chen Gu could see this man's encounter overlapping with what had happened to the Wu Jinping in real life. The man should have been through this period of helplessness and hopelessness before. Every day, he woke up in panic, but with the burden of responsibility pressing on his shoulders, he was forced by life to keep on moving forward. Perhaps Wu Jinping in real life had all forgotten about this period of this life, but it was remembered clearly and with extreme detail by Wu Xing. The child was a precocious little young man. He knew many things that he should not for his age, but it did not mean that he could understand all of them. During the crucial period where his worldview was being constructed and built, he was given a false perspective by the ghost fetus, and something within him changed. There was a connection between then world behind the children's doors and the real life, one could find incidents or actual people behind their doors that corresponded to real life. This should be the unifying factor that was unique to all the worlds behind the doors of the nine children. If Chinga had to guess, the doors of the nine children had all been influenced by the ghost fetus. Following behind Wu Jinping, carrying the backpack, Chin Ji's mind was clocking in overtime. With the evidence that he had collected so far, it was basically a confirmed fact that every child corresponded to a door, and the door would only appear after the child had fallen asleep. 
But of the nine children, Chingu was the only exception because if there was a door that appeared beside his bed after he fell asleep, Xiao Xiao and the white cat would have reacted to it a long time ago. However, the lack of a door by his bed did not mean that one could exclude Chingu from the nine children because he had a real blood door within his vicinity. Compared to the other children's flickering doors, the door in the toilet of Chin Ji's haunted house was an actual blood door. Does this mean I will have to go into that door to take a look? Chinga thought back to a moment in time when he believed he was confronted with three different doors. One of them should belong to the ghost fetus, the second probably belongs to the version of myself who was being killed again and again by the doctor, and who does the last door belong to? Hasn't it already been proven that the door will only appear and be pushed open when one is at the deepest point of their despair? Is it possible that I have pushed open the third door myself? Am I the door pusher for the door inside the toilet of the haunted house? Even though he had multiple red specters with him, Chin Gu did not have the courage to enter that door. He still remembered what Dr. Gao had told him at the underground morgue. It has to be hiding, something extremely scary to be able to scare Dr. Gao. Chin Gu decided to reserve the door at his haunted house for the last night. If the ghost fetus was not hiding inside the other eight candidates, this was the only possibility that remained. He knew that the chance of the ghost fetus hiding behind the door at this haunted house was very low. After all, the ghost fetus' main territory was eastern Zhejiang, and all the spirits and ghosts that had interacted with the ghost fetus before had said that he had treated western Zhejiang as some kind of restricted area. Chen Gu did not believe that the ghost fetus would take the risk to sneak behind the door at his haunted house. There are no clues, and nothing appears to help bring me closer to the truth. Chen Gu sighed under his breath. Just what were the emotions of the person who first pushed open that door? To chase these thoughts that currently had no answer, Chen Gu turned to look behind him. The faceless woman was still chasing after them, but she was not moving fast. In fact, from the way she looked, it did not look like she was determined to kill Wu Jinping, she did not seem to even bear a grudge against him. With Wu Jinping leading the way, Chinga ran through all the nearby streets, and he became more and more confident that this was the old city. Wu Xing must have spent a part of his childhood in the old city. Something that he refused to remember once happened here, and because of that incident, his whole family moved to western Zhejiang. Wu Xing's world behind the door comprised several streets, it was probably one-fifth the size of the actual old city. There were limited locations where they could hide themselves. To avoid the faceless woman, they would have to enter the rooms on both sides of the street, but entering the house might push them into encounters with the monsters inside the houses. They kept moving and running. Eventually, some of the monsters came out from their houses and joined the chase. Just what do we have to do to escape this place? The terror in Wu Jinping's eyes was practicing overflowing. When his large body turned and saw the horde of monsters chasing after them, he started to shiver. We have already run all over these few streets on the eastern side. How about we move to the western side? Perhaps we can find a place to hide there. After following Wu Jinping for some time, Chin Gu had noticed that no matter what kind of danger they were in, Wu Jinping would not head toward the western side. He had been avoiding the streets on the western side on purpose. No way. Wu Jinping denied it directly. The swiftness with which he answered the question added to Chin Ji's suspicion. It's okay then, I will follow your instruction. Chin Gu had a fairly good guess as to why the man refused to go that way. He could empathize with what the man was trying to do. As long as we can hold on until dawn, there should be no more problems. I am sure by then everyone will return to normal, Wu Jinping said to convince and consult Chen Gu, or perhaps it was for his own benefit. After the night passes, the sun will rise. Yes, you are right. Eventually, the sun will rise. Chen Gu patted Wu Jinping on his shoulder. Since we can't go to the western side, I suggest we try to find an exit on the eastern side. Okay. Wu Jinping just gave his promise when a string of urgent dog barking came from the western streets. 
Hearing that sound, Wu Jinping's face shifted dramatically. Pushing away all the warnings that he had made earlier, he immediately rushed toward the western streets. What happened? Chen Gup quickly moved to follow the man. With his yin yang vision, even over that much distance, he could see several figures standing on the western streets. Do not go there. Chen Gu reacted as fast as he could, but he still failed to stop Wu Jinping. Without a care for the world, he charged into an alley on the western streets. There was an old, dilapidated-looking storage room at the end of the small alley. Wearing a pair of shirt that did not fit him, a pair of beautiful eyes blinked continuously. They seemed to take in everything that they saw curiously. Seeing the child unharmed, Wu Jinping sighed greatly in relief. He signaled for Chen Gu, and with the child, they went to hide inside the small house. Daddy, Big Huang has run out, the boy said in a small whisper. It appeared like he was normally quite a reticent child. You stay at home. I promise that I will bring Big Huang back. Wu Jinping touched the boy on his head. The terror and fear that characterized the man earlier had completely disappeared. His eyes were warm and kind, the only thing out of place was the quick breathing. Okay. The boy nodded obediently. When the father and son spoke, the whimpering of the dog appeared again, and this time, it sounded very close to them. Other than the sound of the dog barking, the sound of a crowd started to gather. Various unsettling and uncomfortable noises drilled into Chen Ji's ears. Where does this stray come from? What if it bites someone? Is no one going to look after it? My family still has a small child. What if he is harmed by the stray? Who will be responsible? Get the hell away, you blasted dog. I do not have time for you. Beat it. My mom said that all strays carry disease with them. We need to chase it away. Initially, Chin Guth thought that only he could hear these voices, but when he turned around, he realized that both Wu Jinping and the boy were able to hear them as well because Wu Jinping had used his hands to cover both of the boy's ears. The smile still lingered on his face as he pulled the boy into his light embrace. Daddy, they are beating Big Huang. They said that Big Huang is a stray, but he is not. Don't you worry about that. I will go and rescue Big Huang now. You just stay here and do not move. Wu Jinping then gripped Wu Xing's hands to have the latter cover his own ears. Close your eyes, and I promise, when you open your eyes, Big Huang will be here with you again. Really? Of course, when have I lied to you before? After Wu Xing shut his ears and closed his eyes, Wu Jinping finally stood up. You are not seriously considering going there, are you? With his yin yang vision, Chen Gu saw clearly that there were around ten figures standing on the street. I have made the promise to my son. Wu Jinping pushed open the wooden board that acted as the door. Brother, can you do me a favor? What kind of favor? I will go and distract their attention and after I have lured all of them away, I need you sneak in to rescue Big Huang. No problem. Wu Jinping and Chen Gu jogged out of the small house one after another. Wu Jinping, who led the way, did not turn back. However, behind him, Chen Gu turned back to look into the small house. The boy was still following his father's instructions. He had his hands over his eyes, and his eyes clamped shut. The sound of cursing and scolding became louder and louder. Big Huang was whimpering for help. It was being surrounded by a mob of people. They planned to beat Big Huang to its death right there on the street. Don't let it get away. Go after it. This stray sure runs fast for what it is. Where are you going now that we have already broken your leg? Rummaging through the trash every day to look for food, the strays are all carriers of disease. Stop playing around. Quick, go ahead and kill it. Many voices crawled into Chin Ji's ears. They sounded extremely grating. They were not human noises, they were more like knives. Stop. The disfigured shadows moved out of the way, and Wu Jinping saw Big Huang, who was covered in threads, cowering on the ground. His eyes turned red immediately. 
Big Huang is not a stray. He is my dog. He has never injured anyone, and he would never go through the trash to look for food. After they heard Wu Jinping, the shadows turned around to look at him. The cold and lifeless eyes fell on Wu Jinping, but they did not seem to care what he had to say. The threads continued to sew through Big Huang's body. I swear I will look after him. My son always plays with him. He has never been injured by the dog before. Big Huang is the most obedient pet you could have ever wanted. Please return him to me. From the intensity to the tone of the voice, everything he said sounded real and authentic. It was as if Wu Jinping had said something similar in real life and Wu Xing had memorized it word for word. Give it back to you? How could a homeless man like yourself guarantee that this be asterisk starred will not injure other people? If you are so free, you'd better take better care of yourself first before you come to mind other people's business. This has to be a joke. You said this is your dog. Well, if the pet of a homeless man is not a stray, what is it? Yes, the man himself probably rummages through the trash to look for food, much less his dog. The voices became sharper and ruder. Wu Jinping's body kept shaking, but he tried to reason as rationally as he could. My boy is not in a good condition. The dog is his only companion. For us, the dog is more than a pet he is part of our family. This can't be real. You have a son? What, bringing a child around will garner more pity when you go begging for money? By the way, listen to this. If the dog of a homeless man is a stray, what is the child of a homeless man? Could it be a street child? That's just too much. My boy is not a street child. Both of Wu Jinping's arms were shaking. His eyes were burning with fire as he picked up the random objects around him and threw them at the group of people. As long as I am alive, the dog that I own is not a stray, and my child will never end up as a street child. The figures turned to focus their hatred on Wu Jinping. All the monster's lips were sewn shut, but for some reason, even though their mouths were unable to make any noise, the grating voices did not disappear. After they were attacked, the monsters collectively took out the large needles and black threads from their pockets and rushed at Wu Jinping like a wave. According to the plan, Wu Jinping would lure the mob away, and that was the time for Chen Gu to sneak out from the other side to come and rescue Big Huang. Big Huang's body was sewn with threads. Blood leaked out from the wounds on various parts of his body. The dog had been beaten to death while he was alive. This Big Huang was slightly different from the dog that Chen Gu had seen at Wu Jinping's house in real life. If this was all real, or at least had really happened in the past, then the Big Huang in real life was probably the second pet that Wu Jinping had taken in. Carrying the dog that had already passed away in his arms, Chen Gu lifted his head to look at the small house. The boy inside the house was still holding his hands over his ears, but both of his eyes were wide open. He had witnessed everything. The pair of eyes that seemed to be curious about everything lingered persistently on the dog within Chen Ji's embrace. This is too traumatic for a child his age to witness. Chen Gu did not know what to do. It would be too cruel for the boy if he returned with the mangled carcass of the dog. Even though this was the world behind the door, he did not wish for the boy to relive that trauma and despair one more time. A boy who is still too young to really comprehend the meaning of death had to witness one before his eyes in this kind of manner. Chen Gu placed Big Huang's body inside his backpack and then carried the backpack in both hands into the small house. Where is Big Huang? The boy lifted his head to look up at Chen Gu. He was getting a little bit sleepy, so he went down for a rest. Several seconds later, rushed footsteps came from the alley. Wu Jinping pushed open the wooden door. I have temporarily lost them. In a minute, I will lure all of them to the eastern streets. I will go with you. I worry that you need to deal with so many of them alone. That would be immensely helpful, thankful. Wu Jinping tossed an appreciative gaze at Chen Gu. As he was about to leave, the boy reached forward to grab at the corner of his shirt. Daddy, why are those people chasing after you? 
The boy looked at Wu Jinping with his pair of innocent eyes. Daddy is playing hide and seek with them. Would you like to play with us as well? Wu Jinping ruffled the boy's hair lovingly. Yes. Then you should hide inside that wooden box and try to not make any noise. You will win if you stay put and don't come out of the box. Do you understand me? Understood. The small boy jumped into the box and curled up inside the corner of the box. Wu Jinping pinched the boy on the tip of his nose. You cheeky little thing, make sure that you are not spotted by the other people. Wait until I come back to get you. Chapter 1015, Private Hospital on the Street Corner You're going to leave him like that and make him stay here alone? Chin Gu did not think letting Wu Xing stay inside the small house alone was a good idea. This is my doing. I will lead them away. The child is innocent. I can't put him through this pain. Wu Jinping closed the lid of the wooden box and ran out. Chen Gu watched Wu Jinping run out and turned back to look at Wu Xing. The boy stayed inside the box with his hands over his mouth. He did not say a word, only staring quietly at his father's receding figure. Has the boy not said a word because his father told him so? Chen Gu felt like he had missed something. Never mind, as long as I follow Wu Jinping, the problems will be solved. In Wu Xing's eyes, he was a child under his father's protection. He noticed the problems faced by the family, but he was just a child, he was powerless to change anything. He could only see his father's shoulder, the whole ginormous pressure. Chen Gu worried that if he stayed there for too long, he might expose Wu Xing's location, so he closed the door and hurried after Wu Jinping. The night sky had no moon. The buildings on both sides of the street gave off a light stench, and the atmosphere was suffocating. Wu Jinping rushed ahead, he had no idea what awaited him, but he had no other choice. To prevent his dog from being treated as a stray, to protect his son from the monsters, he could only keep moving forward. Other than the neighbors, the monsters who had their lips sewn should represent the various difficulties that this family has faced. There were more monsters chasing behind Wu Jinping. They were dressed differently, there were well-dressed office workers and the homeless in tattered shirts. There were thieves with knives and others who were dressed normally like passers-by that you would meet on the road. Under the influence of ghost fetus, the condescension, bullying, and derision was maliciously amplified. Chin Gu did not dare to imagine what would have happened to Wu Xing if Wu Jinping did not exist in this world. If such a small child had been forced to face so many scary monsters alone, Chin Gu suspected that Wu Xing would have submerged fully into this despairing world and become the ghost fetus top candidate. Thankfully, he has such a great father. Wu Jinping is the only light in this dark world. Racing down the dark, endless street, being chased with monsters, with sewn lips, with no exit in sight, Wu Jinping still tried his best to come up with a solution. I suppose this is the resilience of human nature. The children selected by the ghost fetus had been lured into despair for them to open the fake doors, but the worlds behind those doors were different from real life. As despairing as the children were, there would be some source of light. In Jiang Ming's world, the light was his mother and the old lady, and in Wu Xing's world, there was Wu Jinping. In their memories, there was always a temporary sanctuary. Running behind Wu Jinping, Chen Gu gained a new understanding of certain things. When he first got the black phone, he discovered the door in his haunted house. At the time, he had only feared the door, it was normal for humans to be afraid of the unknown. But as his understanding grew, Chin Ji's perspective of the door changed. The doors were pushed open by people in despair. The other side of the door was not salvation, but an abyss of deeper despair. The doors were sinful. Chin Gu initially refused to get close to the door. But after being forced by the Ghost Stories Society, when his life was threatened, he had been left with no other choice. After multiple interactions, he had realized that the doors themselves did not represent fear, and they could not be equated to despair. He would not follow the Ghost Stories Society's footsteps of controlling the doors and gaining benefit from them. But subconsciously, his negative impression of the doors had slowly dissipated. 
During the school of the afterlife, Chin Gu had met the painter behind the door. That madman wanted to create a heaven behind the door, constructing a place of heaven in a land of hell. Ultimately, the painter failed, but what he did once again shook Chin Ji's impression of the doors and the worlds behind it. However, the thing that really changed Chin Ji's mind was the incident at Jiang Yuan Apartments. When he saw his young self being pushed off the roof by the man in the doctor's outfit, when he heard the words that he had once said, his perspective of the door really started to change. Perhaps the worlds behind the doors for the children were not so different from real life. There might be light in the worlds behind the doors. Chin Gu watched Wu Jinping and the various monsters who chased after him. The light in the child's world is being chased by many monsters. If there's light behind a real door, they get chased by something darker and scarier. What would the light look like inside an actual door? His parents' image crossed his mind. Chin Gu was suddenly reminded of something that happened a long time ago. He took out the wooden toy that had been stolen by the ghost fetus from his backpack. My father gave me this when I was in bed. He wished me happy birthday. But that morning, he had already presented me with the present and wished me happy birthday. There was no reason for him to repeat it, and he did not exactly give me the present, he merely placed it next to the bed. More details came to Chen Gu. Was the present originally meant for the shadow? Looking at the bloodied toy in his hand, Chen Gu slowed down. Was this the shadow's birthday present? The second happy birthday was meant for the shadow? Could it be that he'd already noticed something by then, but neither me nor the shadow had noticed it? Don't just stand there. Run. Wu Jinping was running out of air, but seeing that Chen Gu had slowed down, he still returned to pull on his sleeves. Do not stop. I know where we can shake them off. Wu Jinping led Chen Gu to an alley on Western Street, there was a private hospital there. It was not that big, and the decor was old-fashioned. But as small as it was, it had everything it needed to serve the public. The hospital has a back door. I ran through this place to shake them off last time. Those things do not dare come in here. Doesn't that mean that there is something scarier than them inside this hospital? We'll go in first. Without saying anything else, Wu Jinping led Chen Gu into the hospital. After the monsters saw that, they really stopped in the alley. After entering the hospital, the many different voices in Chen Ji's ears disappeared, and what was left was the sound of children crying. Chapter 1016 Do You Still Hate Me? The children's crying came from all directions, making it impossible to locate the source. Brother Peng, don't you think this crying is a bit familiar? With his ghost ear, Chin Go held his breath and listened closely. After a while, he discovered with some shock that one of the children's crying was similar to Wu Xing. But isn't he hiding back in the small house? Chen Gu did not get it. He turned to Wu Jinping. The large man's body was shaking. He was pushed by the monsters to his limit. Be it physically or mentally, he was about to collapse. His chest rising and falling violently, Wu Jinping leaned against the hospital wall. His eyes were bloodshot, and they were horribly swollen. Are you okay? When they were running earlier, Chin Gu did not notice this. He subconsciously thought that Wu Jinping was as fit as he was in reality, but that was of course not the case. Come, we'll go to the back door. Scared of staying any longer, after entering the hospital, Wu Jinping acted rather strangely. It was as if something had happened to him the last time he was there, and he was seriously traumatized by it. If not for the lack of choice, he probably would not have returned there. The crying grew louder, and the voice that sounded like Wu Xing's was slowly overwhelmed by other voices. Chen Gu noted that as he followed behind Wu Jinping silently. The hospital was small, but it had all the necessary medical rooms. From the appearance, the place looked normal. It was a common small city hospital. There was nothing scary about it. Walking down the deserted corridor, Wu Jinping led Chen Gu to the corner of the stair. By then, the crying had reached a level that was uncomfortable to one's ears. Do you see the window at the corner of the stairs? 
If you jump through it, you'll end up on the western street. That way, we can shake the monsters loose. However, Wu Jinping did not move. His eyes were filled with terror. This made Chen Ge realize that things were not that simple. Brother, pay attention to me. When we go up the stairs, no matter what you hear or see, do not stop. Rush all the way to the window, understood? Wu Jinping warned. If the backpack is weighing you down, I can carry it for you. After we get to the stairs, we have to run as fast as we can to the window. It's all right. I've been known as a fast runner since I was small. Wu Jinping and Chen Gu stood before the stairs. They were ready. After exchanging a look, they moved together toward the window. Footsteps echoed on the stairs. When he took the first step, Chen Gu still had not felt anything, but as he continued to move forward, the children's crying was like a waterfall, crashing into his eyes. His brain was swamped by the crying, dazing him in the process. Do not stop. Obviously, Wu Jinping had experienced this before. At this crucial moment, the man still cared about Chen Gu and shouted to warn him. The crying grew louder, and the ground under his feet wobbled like he was not stepping on concrete steps. Chen Gu lowered his head to look and saw many small hands reaching out from the ground to grab his feet. The empty stairwell was suddenly crawling with faceless babies. As experienced as Chen Gu was with the supernatural, he hesitated for a moment. He instinctually avoided the babies and chose the empty spaces to place his feet. The sound of a door opening came from the second floor. When Chen Gu looked up, a red wave rushed out from the second floor, rushing at Chen Gu and Wu Jinping. Jump out the window. Do not stop. Chen Gu was the first to reach the window. By the time he pushed the window open, the blood wave had reached them. At that moment, he could jump out, but if he did, Wu Jinping would definitely be swept away by the wave. Grab my hand. When Chen Gu said that, the wave was cresting. Soon, it swallowed both Chen Gu and Wu Jinping. The blood rushed into this nose and blocked his breathing. Pain erupted all over his body. Chen Gu forced his eyes open, and at the last moment, Wu Jinping grabbed at Chen Ji's backpack. The blood surged endlessly from the second floor. Other than the sound of children crying, there was a second voice that appeared. It was the whispering of a woman. Run while you can. Don't mind me. Wu Jinping was swept by the wave until he could barely stand. He knew that this was probably his end. There is still chance. Think of your son. When Chen Gu turned around to speak, a woman with a red hair clip appeared at the corner of the second floor. She wore a loose-fitted pregnancy gown, and her faceless face was staring at Wu Jinping. The woman's whispers became clearer. Like a curse or a venomous snake, they crawled into the two men's heads. Jean Peng, don't you recognize me anymore? Am I a bad mother? Do you hate me? The boy didn't even know how to cry when he was born, but is that my fault? If he was a normal child, I would never do that, but you heard the doctor. The boy was too special. We won't be able to take care of him. If he is given the chance to grow, he will only become a monster that everyone hates. If he was a normal child, I would really stay to take care of him with you. But he is not a normal child. I can't do this anymore. My life has just started. I do not want such a baggage to ruin my life. Wu Jinping, why don't you come with me? We should run away together. Don't think I'm being selfish. We have been through so much. Is what I am asking too much? Even if he grows up, do you think he will really find happiness? Do you want him to end up like your little brother? You know that you will one day grow old, and then who will take care of your brother? Who will take care of this child? Instead of trapping yourself with all these responsibilities, why not come with me and live for yourself for once? The man in my eyes is a bird that flies freely in the air, so, come fly with me. The woman's empty face was slowly changing. She waded through the blood and suddenly appeared before Wu Jinping. The pale hands broke through the blood as they moved to caress Wu Jinping's face. 
bliss, happiness, desire, freedom, I am everything you seek, so why do you refuse to give me your hand? The woman leaned lightly next to Wu Jinping and had Wu Jinping lean his head on her. I have never asked for anything from you. This is the first time. Promise me that we will leave together. Wu Jinping turned to the woman, and the featureless face became blurrier and blurrier. His eyes slowly lost their shine, and he stopped struggling as if he was being hypnotized by the woman's words. The hands that grabbed Chin Ji's backpack slowly loosened. Wu Jinping's body was slowly swallowed by the blood. Just as Chin Ge thought that Wu Jinping was a lost cause, the father who was almost two meters tall in Wu Xing's eyes reached out to grab the faceless woman's shoulders. Quick, go get Wu Xing and run. Chapter 1017 Let the world hear your voice, Wu Jinping ignored the blood that might choke him. He screamed loudly like this was his last chance. Realizing that Wu Jinping had not been influenced by her words, the faceless woman was incensed. Black blood capillaries bulged on the woman's pale arms as she reached out to strangle Wu Jinping. Why? Why do you still wish to protect him? I have given you everything you could ask for. Why do you volunteer to stay with despair? A face slowly appeared on the woman. It was not a woman's face, but the face of a baby boy. The ghost fetus? Why can't I kill you? I am the only one who really wants to help you. Why do you all insist on lying to yourselves? Why do you all believe those things that do not exist? The woman snapped Wu Jinping's neck, but she could not kill him. Wu Jinping, who was dying, waved anxiously at Chen Gu. He could not make a voice, but he tried to open his lips, attempting to speak. The woman's face had taken on the form of a baby. Her mouth was wide open, but her eyes were closed, like it was a ginormous effort to open them. Her dress was dyed red by blood. This monster was obviously more powerful than the snail behind Jiang Ming's door. Qin Ge finally understood everything. Wu Xing was born with a disability. He was abandoned by his mother because of it. That was the hurdle that the boy couldn't get over. The ghost fetus used this to his advantage to spread his malice, trying to trap the boy within the abyss of despair. However, the ghost fetus miscalculated. Wu Xing has a very good father. No matter what happens, Wu Xing will be protected by his father. From Wu Jinping, Wu Xing understood that the world was not as despairing as depicted by the ghost fetus. The ghost fetus couldn't kill Wu Xing's father because he was unable to change Wu Xing's impression of Wu Jinping. Chen Gu did not run. He looked at the crazed woman. It's rather surprising that a demon god has been pushed to such lengths by a normal human father. After understanding everything, Chen Gu understood the knot in Wu Xing's heart and the key was he had found the ghost that the ghost fetus chose to possess. There is no need for this world to exist anymore. After killing this woman I should be able to decrease the ghost fetus power further. Clicking on the recorder, Chen Gu took several steps back. Compared to the snail, this woman is much scarier. Wu Xing's world behind the world was also more stable than Jiang Ming's. Looks like there are differences between the nine doors. Standing in the pool of blood, Chen Gu took out the comic. The crying and whispering gradually weakened, replaced by shrill screams and heartbreaking wails. Red cracks spread through the walls and floor. The woman standing in the blood finally noticed Chen Gu. She put down the mangled Wu Jinping, the poor man who had been tortured but still had a breath in him, and walked toward Chen Gu. An adult woman with a baby's face, it was quite scary, but Chen Gu felt no fear. As more red specters appeared, the woman stopped. Brother Pong. Wake up, this place is going to the dumps. The sun will rise soon. Suin, old by, and the stench had appeared first and jumped at the woman. The woman fought evenly with the three red specters. To Chin Ji's surprise, the woman had an exception control over the blood. She seemed to be able to multitask very well. Get her. More and more red specters appeared. After the red high heels joined the fray, the woman finally reached her limits. She kept cursing, but the battle was decided. 
The blood under her control was spread thin, and the baby's eyes opened a slit at the last moment. I will kill you. No matter who you are, I will kill you. The woman dissolved into blood mist. The blood disappeared, and what remained was a child's tooth, covered in black blood. Killing is illegal. To stop you from straying from the good path, I could only try my best to stop you. Chin Gu walked over to the tooth and realized that the tooth had words, carved into it, Is this my tooth? He was about to pick it up when the tooth suddenly disappeared into his shadow. His hand hung in the air, leaving Chen Gu startled. Zhang Ya? The world behind Wu Xing's door was about to collapse. Chen Gu could not stay for long. Carrying the backpack and Wu Jin Peng, they ran to the small house where Wu Xing was hiding. Brother, put me down, I was just reminded of many things. We'll talk after we leave this place. They rushed to the small house, and Chen Gu and Wu Jinping entered the room. Wu Xing? Wu Jinping smoothed down his clothes and opened the wooden box. Wu Xing was still inside, covering his mouth with his hands. The game is over. You don't need to be afraid of your voice attracting the monsters or bad people anymore. From now on, you can say anything you want. I want the world to hear your voice, okay? He picked up Wu Xing from the box. Today, we're finally moving. With the protection of the Red Spectres, the group reached the end of the western streets. Many cracks appeared on the sealed iron door. It's time for us to leave. Chen Gu looked at Wu Jinping. The large and muscular man put Wu Xing down and then bent down to pull Wu Xing into a tight hug. The thing I am proudest of in my life is having you as my son. Go now. You do not belong here. This place shouldn't hold you back. The broken iron door was pushed open. Wu Jinping nudged Wu Xing toward Chen Gu. As the world started to collapse, so did Wu Jinping's body. Summoning back the red specters, Chen Gu held Wu Xing's hand and stepped through the black door. Bang! His knees knocked against the side of the bed. Chen Gu, who carried the backpack, tripped over, and he collapsed onto the single bed. The flickering door disappeared, and a familiar voice came from the darkness. Brother? You, huh? Where did you come from? The lamp was turned around. Feeling the light on him, Wu Jinping was staring at Chen Gu in bed with his mouth open. Wu Xing, who had been sound asleep, also opened his eyes. Perhaps because he was being pressed down by Chen Gu or he was reminded of something, when he saw Wu Jinping, he started to cry. The crying was loud, so loud that the neighbors could hear him clearly. Oh, don't cry. The uncle did not mean to collapse on you. Wu Jinping was confounded. Wu Xing had been born with problematic voice cords. He would not cry when he was born. His face was often green, supposedly from all the words that he held in. Wu Jinping did not expect the child that could not cry since he was young, the child who was declared abnormal by the doctors, would suddenly cry that day, and he was crying so loudly. Go give your boy a hug. He has seen too many things, and those things have been corroding his heart. Chen Gu hugged his knees and sat at the corner. He did not interrupt Wu Jinping and Wu Xing. Chapter 1018 Fifth Living Employee Wu Xing sat next to Wu Jinping and kept crying as if he was making up for the tears that he had been holding in all these years. His small hands gripped Wu Jinping's clothes, and his face was scrunched up in pain. He wanted to say something, but his voice was overwhelmed by his crying. It's only a nightmare. Everything's fine now. I am here. Wu Jinping hugged Wu Xing and patted him lightly on his back. The father and son embraced each other, and Chen Gu sighed in relief. He rubbed his knees and slowly walked out. When he pulled back the curtain, the black phone vibrated. Chen Gu took it out to read the latest message. You have completed February 9th of the ghost fetus trial mission. The ghost fetus can no longer curse you through your voice. Red specters favored, you do not have much time left. A curse can be inflicted through my voice? Meaning he only needs to hear me speak to curse me? That is such a powerful ability. 
In Chin Ji's experience, curses needed a medium. To curse a person, one needed their hair, fingernails, or clothes, but the message on the black phone corrected his misunderstanding. The ghost fetus only needed to hear his voice to curse him. However, this must only be the tip of the iceberg. As a demon god, the ghost fetus must have more power than this. Even with the protection of the red specters, Chinga felt not so safe. The ghost fetus has too many ways to hurt me. I might get harmed without even knowing it. No wonder the black phone claims that once the ghost fetus is born, I will definitely die. The crying inside the bedroom woke up Wu Kuan, who was sleeping in the living room. He hugged the broken fan and looked at Chin Gu with fear. Initially, Chin Gu did not mind it, but the man did not stop staring at him, to the point Chin Gu felt quite unsettled. Why are you looking at me like this? Do you see something on me? Hearing Chin Ji's voice, Wu Jinping's brother grabbed the thin blanket to cover his head. He was at the verge of tears. Wu Kuan was eight years younger than Wu Jinping. Being treated like this by a man over 30, Chin Gu felt quite uncomfortable. Are you afraid of me? Chin Gu walked toward Wu Kuan. Before he got near, Wu Kuan extended his two shaking hands. The fan, the fan. Wu Kuan held the broken fan with both hands, as he knelt on the ground with his shaking body. You want to give me the fan? Chen Ge sat down before Wu Kuan. When he was about to take the fan, he saw the wounds on Wu Kuan's arms. Something does not feel right. Why does he keep mentioning fan? What is he trying to express? Now that I think about it, I did not encounter Wu Kuan behind Wu Xing's door. As his father's younger brother, it's impossible that Wu Xing has no impression of him. Chen Gu returned the fan to Wu Kuan. After a long time, Wu Kuan finally calmed down. Tell me, what are you so afraid of? Before Wu Kuan could answer, the curtain was pulled back. Wu Jinping switched the bedside lamp off. How is Wu Xing? He fell asleep after he tired himself out crying. Wu Jinping's eyes were puffy, too. He stood before Chen Gu. Brother, the biggest wish in my life is that Wu Xing can grow up like a normal child, and I have already prepared to take care of him forever, thank you. Brother Peng, to be honest, you're the reason Wu Xing could make this recovery. Chen Gu planned to employ Wu Jinping, so he did not hide too many things. What I'm going to say next, you can choose to not believe me, but I ask that you do not tell anyone else. Don't worry, you have my word. Behind that door is a despairing, gory, and eerie world. After Wu Xing falls asleep every night, he is trapped inside that world. Such a small child has to face all sorts of monsters alone. Chen Gu lowered his voice. As a self-defense mechanism, he conjured up a version of you in his dream. The dream version of yourself is no different from you in real life, you have been trying your best to protect him. It is because of you that he did not lose himself and his soul to the demon. Wait, you're suddenly giving me too much information. Let me process it first. After a moment's silence, Wu Jinping suddenly pinched himself. Then, doesn't that mean that if I went into the door sooner, Wu Xing would have been spared from the torture earlier? Not anyone can enter that door. If a normal person enters it, they will most likely unable to return. When Chen Gu turned to Wu Jinping, he narrowed his pupils as he used Ying Yang vision. Wu Jinping wilted under Chen Ji's gaze. He felt like he was staring at a dead person's eyes. Are you afraid? A little bit. Wu Jinping nodded honestly. This handsome man was obedient like a child before Chen Gu. I lied to you earlier. I told you that there was a child of my relative that was like Wu Xing but that was a lie to get close to you. Chen Gu put down the backpack and sighed. In reality, there is no relative in this story. The child that has the same condition as Wu Xing is me. You? Wu Jinping was baffled. But you look so normal. I grew up normally like other children because I have parents that love me dearly. They've entered a door for me. Chen Gu slowly lowered his head but they have not returned from that door. 
I haven't been unable to find them. Is that why you have been looking for doors? To see if you can find them behind the doors? Wu Jinping's eyes became red again. He could empathize with Chen Gu. Brother, if you don't mind, let me help you in your endeavor. I'm sure you'll need a hand. And you helped me save Wu Xing. I have to repay you somehow. That's unnecessary. I came here due to my selfish reason. I just wanted to see whether my parents might be behind Wu Xing's door. No matter what, it's the truth that you've saved Wu Xing. Brother, don't make me beg you. Wu Jinping pleaded. Fine, looks like I can't win this argument. Chen Ge raised his head. My real occupation is the owner of a haunted house. Do you know what that is? I used to visit them when I was a child. Now that I think about it, I visited quite a number of them. Wu Jinping appeared quite interested. Brother Peng, where do you work now, and how much you earn a month? If you include the overtime, I get paid about 4,000 a month, but with the current economy, I don't know how long that'll last. I've been hearing rumors of an imminent calling. How about this? Come and work for me at my haunted house. I'll pay you 4,000 as a basic salary and a bonus at the end of the month. Chen Ji's haunted house desperately needed living employees, and most of the time, one employee had to take on more than one role. Chen Ge had no choice. His haunted house was too unique, and he would only hire actual people that he had 100% confidence in. That is too much. I was planning to help you, but now you've turned around and helped me with my work problem. You're being too kind to me. Wu Jinping shook his head. After all, you have seen the door, that makes communication of certain things much easier. Other than that, you have a wonderful personality. I'm sure you'll mix well with the other employees. Chen Gu admired Wu Jinping greatly. This father who had been through who knew how much had a loving heart and a tough soul. Chapter 1019 Bad Neighbor from the Old City You don't need to worry about me making friends. I've always been friendly with my colleagues, but you can pay me according to how you'd pay an intern. At least let me prove myself before you hire me officially, Wu Jinping said sincerely. I do not hire interns, or rather, the internship period is very short. Normally, I can tell whether a person is suitable for the job or not with one glance. Chen Ji's haunted house only had one new employee ceremony, and that was to go through all the scenarios with the visitors once. If they could come out with their consciousness somewhat still intact, they could stay and work. Okay, then after I send Wu Xing to school tomorrow, I'll quit my current job. Due to this economy, I doubt they will ask me to stay. I'll head to our haunted house in the afternoon. By the way, where is it? Western Zhejiang's New Century Park. Chen Gu looked at Wu Jinping. This was the fifth living employee that he had hired. Whether he expanded into Xian High or anything else, Wu Jinping should come in handy. The shadows would be handled by the ghosts, and the living would work under the sunlight, a good haunted house had to function on both fronts. Now that Wu Jinping was officially a part of the haunted house, he was Chen Ji's family, and Chen Ge always had time for his family. Brother Peng, I have one last thing to ask you. Chen Ge stood up and walked to Wu Kuan. Has your little brother always been like this? Did your parents try to send him to get some treatment? They did try when he was young, but the effect was not so good. Even though he was unable to live independently or work, he could do some simple housework. My brother is very kind. He often surprises me by helping me with the chores. Wu Jinping sat down next to his brother. Sometimes, when I was working in the day and singing in bars at night, it was my little brother who looked after Wu Xing. Even though they both have some problems, they're good friends. Good friends? Then that's strange. Chen Gu did not want to hide anything. There was a lot of symbolism behind Wu Xing's door, and all the symbols could be related back to the reality, but I did not see anything that could represent Wu Kuan in Wu Xing's door. It is as if Wu Kuan does not exist in Wu Xing's mind. That's impossible. They stay together every day. 
That is the first point that struck me as strange. The second point is the fan that Wu Kuan is holding. Why does he insist on the fan? Chen Go looked at Wu Kuan's mangled fingers. Your little brother might be mentally challenged, but he showed no sign of being a self-harming person. There are many different kinds of mental illnesses, and he does not appear to have the kind where he would push his hands into a fan voluntarily. So, I suspect someone else was there when the accident happened. You mean someone pushed my brother's hands into the fan? Wu Jinping's jaw tightened. Why else would he keep on mentioning the fan? He might be warning you. Chen Ge had just finished when Wu Jinping woke Wu Kuan up. Wu Kuan, who knew nothing, hugged the fan and curled up in the corner. He was both angry and afraid. Xiao Kuan, your big brother is here. Tell me, did someone bully you? Don't be afraid. Have you forgotten? I always helped you fight those people who bullied you when we were small. I will go and punch those who dares bully you, so will you tell me who did this? Wu Jinping spoke very fast on the account of his anger, and that spooked his younger brother. Wu Kuan hugged the fan, grabbed the blanket, and crawled all over the floor, screaming. Do you know what time it is? You might not want to sleep, but I do. The house had a horrible soundproof wall. The neighbors started to complain, so Chen Gu helped Wu Jinping detain Wu Kuan. Xiao Kuan, don't be afraid. I am here with you. Wu Jinping pulled Wu Kuan's head into his embrace, but his eyes was looking at Chen Gu. Now that you mention it, I was reminded of something. My brother's condition has been steadily improving for some time. But ever since his hands were injured by the fan, his condition suddenly deteriorated greatly. Did your little brother act strangely at all after that accident? Wu Jinping thought about it. Actually, yes. There were several times when I got home and saw my brother staring at his own shadow in the corner. He even used his hand to slap at it occasionally. Was it the shadow from Liwan City that harmed Wu Kuan? But according to the shadow's personality, if Wu Kuan stood in his way, he would have just killed Wu Kuan. He would not let him live, so why was that? Chen Gu was surprised that he would be able to get more clues from Wu Jinping's brother. Other than the fan, did Wu Kuan mention anything else that was out of place? Let me think. Wu Jinping's brows were scrunched up in thought. Yes. At the time, we were still living at our old house. Wu Kuan would run away so fast whenever we needed to go out, it was as if he refused to stay too long on our floor. One time I asked him why, he pointed at the door of our neighbor, shouting again and again ghost, ghost. The old house? Where did you live when you stayed in the old city? We were staying at Jiujiang Old City's blissful East Street, then we moved to Eastern Jiujiang, and finally due to work, we moved again to Western Jiujiang. Wu Jinping told Chen Gu all the addresses of his former rental homes. Your family has stayed in the old city before. Jiang Ming has stayed in the old city. Fan Yun has spent his childhood in the old city. Something must be wrong with the old city. Chen Gu marked down Wu Jinping's former address. He planned to visit it the following day. Wait, I am reminded of something else. Wu Jinping opened the wooden box that had his guitar and took out a mud statuette with Wu Xing's name on it. The statuette was dark like it was made from mud and blood. When we were staying at the old city, that strange neighbor gifted us an altar. He said that by placing it at home, Wu Xing would definitely speak within nine years. Where is that altar now? The altar was too big to carry it with us when we moved for the second time so we left it at the rental house in eastern Zhejiang. The new tenant thought it was quite taboo to have an unknown altar in the house, so he moved it to the basement. Wu Jinping handed the mud statuette to Chen Gu. But we have been keeping the mud statuette from inside the altar with us. Everything now matched. Chen Gu accepted the statuette and placed it on his shadow. Brother Peng, that altar is not for good fortune. It's a home for a demon. You have been tricked by that neighbor. Could it be that neighbor who stuck Wu Kuan's hands into the fan? For now, we can't be sure, but I will investigate this further. 
you should get a good rest, so I shall not disturb you any more. Chen Ge picked up the statuette from the shadow and returned it to Wu Jinping. See you at work tomorrow. Strangely enough, the statuette did not stay on Chen Ji's shadow for that long, but all the black blood stains had disappeared. Chapter 1020 A person made from curses the people in the rental house did not notice that Chen Ji's shadow started to slowly change its shape after consuming the blood stains on the mud statuette. It appeared like a young woman who was turning lightly in her sleep. You guys should get a good rest. I will see you tomorrow. Chen Ge took a look at the clock on the wall. It was already 2 a.m. After he left Wu Jinping's rental house, Chen Ge did not return to New Century Park but got into a cab to head to the old city. The weak light from the street lamps filtered through the taxi window and fell on his body. Chen Gu watched as the quiet city went by and pulled his collar tighter to his body. The old city at night was very different from how it looked in the day. The government did not spend money to fix most of the broken street lamps, so the roads were dark and dim. The place was as quiet and as dark as a ghost town. As Jiujiang continued to grow, more and more people moved away from the old city to seek a new fortune at the newer part of the town. Passing through the dark streets, Chen Ge took only about ten minutes to find Wu Jinping's previous rental home. The place was about two streets away from where Fan Yu once lived. But the condition here was much worse and the stench in the air was also much thicker. How did they manage to stay here for so long? Or is it only me who can smell the horrible stench? Chen Ge thought back to the morning when he had gone to find Jiang Ming's mother at that area of the city. Both the ladies from the neighborhood committee and Jiang Ming's mother did not comment on the strange smell in the air. As Chen Gu was reminded of it, he realized that it was strange indeed. He wondered if that meant they had gotten used to it or something else completely. Walking through the alley, Chen Gu finally reached his destination. Chen Gu held the rusted banister of an old staircase to get up to the second floor of one of the buildings. He looked around him. He was not at the oldest and most dilapidated part of the old city. Room 204, Room 204. Found it, this one. Chen Ge stopped his footsteps. Before him was a wooden door that was painted red. A rusted iron chain was tied around the doorknob. After Wu Jinping's family moved away, has no one rented this room? Flipping through the comic, Chen Ge summoned out Men Nan. Brother Nan, I need your help. I need you to go into this room and scout out the place for me, but be careful of the room next door. Do not go in there no matter what. Room 205, which was the innermost room on the second floor, was the room that Wu Kuan said was haunted. It was also the tenant of that room who had given Wu Jinping the altar and the mud statuette, masquerading them as a blessing and gift. For the sake of security, Chin Ge only told Man Nan to enter room 204. If he came back with nothing, then he would summon a few more red specters, and they would barge into room 205 together. Droplets of fresh blood slid through the wooden gap. Men Nan reappeared one minute later after he slipped into the room. Everything in the room looks normal. There is nothing that appears out of place, but it feels strangely uncomfortable staying inside the room even though I cannot give you an exact reason why. Then, I need you to take Suin along with this pair of red high heels into room 205. The three red specters entered room 205. Several seconds later, a strange sound came out from inside the room. It sounded like a knife piercing balloons that were filled with water. And then Chen Gu heard bones being dislocated and shirts being torn. What is going on? Blood vessels crawled on the door and a thick stench of blood started to spread all over the place. From that, Chen Ge knew for sure that Men Nan's group had run into something behind the door. He wasted no time to summon Xiaobu and the red raincoat from the comic. On this side, it was hell on earth, but suddenly, the light on the corridor about five to six meters away was switched on, and a man's annoyed grumbling and footsteps could be heard. Just as the man was about to arrive, the door of room 205, before Chen Gu, was suddenly pushed open from the inside. Chen Gu, quick come in and take a look. Darting into the room, Chen Gu held his nostrils out of habit. 
There was a heavy stink collecting inside the room. He closed the door behind him as light as he could and then used Yin Yang vision to study the apartment. The place was not big. It was only about 30 cubic meters in size. There were many faded newspaper cuttings on the wall, and dust had settled on every surface. It appeared like the place had been deserted for a long time. Did you guys fight something earlier? Did anyone get injured or hurt? Chen Gu was both curious and concerned. It was not a thing that we fought, it was a curse. Men Nan pulled down the newspaper cuttings that were stuck to the wall. Behind the newspaper cuttings, torn out hair and patches of black blood were clumped together on the walls. They looked like an eerie piece of art. These are the curse? Yes, the hair pieces and the blood came from different people. When we first got in, the black threads of curse started intertwining and spread all over the room. If you had entered carelessly, you would have been cursed without even knowing it. Men Nand signaled for Chen Gu to retreat. He did not want the man to stay too close to the walls. Is the curse here similar to the curse in Liwan City? They are two different kinds of curses. Only Man Nan, who was holding the pair of red high heels and reached Chin Ji's knees, was answering his question seriously. Based on what this big sister told me, the curse in the room was merely a byproduct of another curse when it was being processed and completed. In other words, someone once used this room to create a very scary curse when they were living here. You could see it that way, yes. After all, the curse formed from the negative emotions that lingered in this place are a mere taste of the actual curse. They were only a very small and insignificant part of the actual and original curse. Men Nan nodded. He had this kind of serious and cautious personality. A very small and insignificant part of the curse is already powerful enough to distort the room to such a dangerous state, so how scary is the actual curse itself? How dangerous will it be? It is unimaginable. At least this big sister said she has not encountered such a powerful and scary curse before. Men Nan raised the pair of red high heels toward Chen Gu. Can you please take her away from me? I am not really afraid of her but it feels rather awkward for me to carry her around by her shoes. Chen Gu ignored Man Nan's request and continued with his questioning. Is it possible for any of you to tell what the original curse is about based on what's currently in the room? Can you tell me who the original curse is meant for? We cannot tell who the target of the curse is, but we managed to wrangle some information from the wall. This curse is made up from nine distinct parts. Men Nan tore down all the newspaper cuttings from the innermost wall of the room. The wall that was covered in torn out hair and blood stains carved out the shape of a small figure. There were many statements written within the shadow of the figure with untidy handwriting. What is a human being? What constitutes a human being? What are they made up from? A pair of eyes that can see the world, a pair of ears that can hear the world, a mouth that can communicate the world, a body that can host the soul. Human beings also need memories, layers of their past. What is light? Warmth, yes, human bodies give off heat and warmth. They also say human beings should have love, but what is love? I seem to be missing something very important. Think. What does he have that I don't? The rows of statements cut up the small figure neatly into nine pieces, and each piece was painted a different color. The painting itself is the curse? Chen Gu was rather confounded by this discovery. Instead of calling it a curse, it is more accurate to refer to it as the tenant's dream whisperings. These were the things that he was thinking about the most when he was working on the curse, Men Nan said. This curse gave us a very strange feeling. It is like underneath the heavy coat of death, there hides a young sapling that is growing amid the darkness. The nine parts should correspond to the nine children. So, it is most likely that it was the ghost fetus who left behind this curse. This means that he has once stayed in the old city. Those were all the clues they could find in the room. Chen Gu summoned back the few red specters and walked out from the apartment. Something horrible will happen should someone accidentally walk into this place. Chingo locked the door securely. 
He planned to return when he had more time on his hands to give this place a good cleaning. Sounds like someone was coming out from this room earlier. Since he is still awake, I might as well use this opportunity to ask him some questions. Chen Go walked to the other end of the second floor. This room was different from the other room. The door had an additional anti-theft steel door on top of the normal wooden door. This set itself apart from the other tenants. Is anyone home? Chen Gun knocked on the door lightly. Moments later, the agitated voice of a middle-aged man echoed out from inside the room. Stop F asterisk King knocking on the door. The wooden door inside the rental house was pulled open. An unkempt, middle-aged man who was radiating an uncomfortable smell of sweat stood at the door. Was it you who created such a loud commotion outside the door earlier? Did you just move here? Why aren't you in bed when it is already so late at night? If you continue to make such a big ruckus, I am going to call the cops on you. There is no need to trouble the police for such a small thing. I just wish to ask you a few questions. Chen Gook smiled very politely. Of course, I do not expect you to help me for no reason. If you can answer my questions nicely, I will give you 100 RMB for each question that you have answered. Are you sleepwalking, or is this some kind of prank? You came to my door at 2.30 in the early morning to give me a quiz? The middle-aged man looked around cautiously like a possibility just dawned on him. There is a camera hidden somewhere, isn't there? Where's the camera crew? First, who is the landlord of this building? I am the landlord of this place. What's the problem? Are you here to rent a room? Then I have to ask you to leave. I will not rent a troublemaker like you. As unsightly as the middle-aged man was, the way he looked at Chen Gu was still filled with derision and condescension. Second, have you rented out room 205 at the end of this corridor to someone recently? Chen Gu did not want to waste time on nonsense with the man. If not for his generosity, he would have barged into the room, released the red specters, and slammed the exit shut already. Room 205 has been rented out since about six years ago. The tenant sends me money every year punctually. The man does not stay here often, but he asks that I keep the room available for him. Since he is paying me money, I don't see the harm in following his instructions. The middle-aged man scratched at his hair that was clumped together from a lacking of washing. You have not rented it to anyone else during this past six years? No, the tenant always gives me the money about six months before the deadline every year, and he often slips me extra, paying me more than the required rental. Why would I chase away such a good tenant? What does that tenant look like? Do you know what kind of career he is in? Chen Gu had a feeling that this tenant was the ghost fetus that he was looking for. Why should I tell you about that private information? Who are you? Are you a police officer? Why do you think I will leak my tenant's valuable information to you? The middle-aged man crossed his arms. If you tell me the specifics about the man's appearance and what he does for a living, I will give you another 500 RMB. He is a student. He first moved here about five years ago. I believe it was because he got into a serious argument with his family, and he had run away from home. At the time, he had just gotten into secondary school, and he did not have much money on him. The middle-aged man exposed the details of the tenant of room 205. He did not stand out in terms of appearance. He had long hair and a weak constitution. I could hear him very often and he had the tendency to mumble in his sleep. Is that all you can give me? That is a bit too general. Kids like that litter the street. How do you expect me to go and find him? Chen Gu did not hold out much hope based on the clues that had been given him by the middle-aged man. You want to go and find him? The middle-aged man gave Chen Gu a once-over and then extended his index finger. Give me another 1,000 RMB and I will tell you a way that you will be able to find him. No problem, you have a deal. After he ran away from home, his mother came here to look for him. At the time, he was not home, so his mother came to talk to me instead. She left me with a message for the boy. 
When he came back, I was to inform him that his mother had come, and she wanted him to go to the Eastern Jiujiang's Huai AI Hospital to find her. She seemed to be the head nurse for that hospital. The middle-aged man was not as sleepy as when Chen Gu first knocked on his door. Even though it was fast approaching 3 a.m., at the thought that he was about to get at least 2,000 RMB from answering a few easy questions, his eyes were practically glowing. This information is very valuable. Of course, that is if you are not lying to me. Chen Gu pulled open the zipper of his backpack. Why would I lie to you? Now stop wasting my time and give me the money. Don't think you can cheat me. I have been counting. I have answered more than enough of your questions to earn at least 2,000 RMB. The middle-aged man saw Chen Gu open his backpack, so his greedy gaze involuntarily wandered to look inside it. He noticed the bulging backpack had a human spine lying inside it. Rubbing his eyes, the middle-aged man glanced deeper into the backpack. Other than the real human spine, there was a pair of bloody red high heels inside the backpack. A madman? Pervert? Murderer? Serial killer? Cold sweat covered and slid down the middle-aged man's face. Without even realizing it, he took a cautionary step backward. My phone is running out of power, so I can't do a bank transfer. Why don't you open the door? I will hand you the cash instead. Chin Gu leaned closer to the steel door, and his lips were slowly curling upward. You just need to open a small gap for my hand to squeeze through. There is no need. That is unnecessary. I. I only answered a few questions. Why should I expect to be paid for that? The middle-aged man took another step back. I have already shared everything that I know. I do not know any more than that. The kid has not been back here for a long time. I believe he will not return any time soon. So, you'd better go look for him somewhere else. Okay. You are probably right about that. Chenga nodded. With a sense of responsibility weighing him down, he turned to ask the landlord again, do you really not want the money? No, no, I really don't. The middle-aged man waved his hands repeatedly and then quickly slammed the wooden door shut. Looks like there are still good people in this world. Chen Gu carried his backpack and walked down the stairs. I have not heard of this Huai AI hospital before. It should be a private hospital. I'll go and visit the place tomorrow. Stretching his back lazily, Chen Gu left the old city without turning back. When the sun rises, I'll only have five nights left. When Chin Gu returned to his own haunted house's staff break room, the sun was already rising. He had just crawled into bed when he received a message from Li Jing on the phone that he had just plunged into the socket to charge. This is an emergency. Reply to me if you see this message. Chin Gu, call me immediately when you see this message. There were many similar messages. Chen Gu could hear the urgency in the messages, so he quickly called Li Zheng's number. The phone rang only once before it was picked up. Li Zheng's voice came from the other side of the line. Chen Gu, are you all right? Why wouldn't I be? Chen Gu was as confused as he could be. Yesterday, we closed in on the location of Jia Ming's group, and the capture operation was scheduled to be done at night. The boy's father, Jin Chun was killed by the suspect Bei Yi, while the boy's mother, Yu Wang Qing, is in ICU due to serious injuries. The suspect, Bei Yi, was shot and died on the spot. However, both Jia Ming and the boy were not at the crime scene. We have blocked all the roads, but no one has seen any sign of him. How did Jia Ming manage to escape with a child? From the very beginning, Jia Ming planned to use Bei Yi and the boy's parents as bait. He purposely exposed himself, and when we were busy with his partners, he used the opening to escape. He used his partner's life to buy time for himself. The man is so awful. How can a man be so heartless? He is no longer a normal man, but Inspector Li, why are you telling me all this? Li Jing normally would not reveal this inside information to a member of the public. Since he had chosen to share the information with Chen Gu, 
it could only mean that what happened next would be related to Chen Gu. Jia Ming's group did not leave Jiao Jiang because they were looking for something. For now, we do not know what that is, but we found a lot of information that's related to you at their hiding place. I suspect that their next target might be you. They are trying to come for me? Then that is really so scary. Chen Gu almost let slip the words. Would be perfect. Can support us, completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for come in and love the sharing story.